So what is BIDS? For over 40 years, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies or BIDS has been the country's foremost socio-economic think tank. It conducts rigorous and objective policy research and analyses that help the government in crafting relevant policies, plans, and programs in support of the country's long-term vision and development goals. PIDS pursues its mandate through three basic programs research, dissemination, and outreach. Through its research program, PIDS identifies and prioritizes studies, develops proposals, and conducts research on priority areas. The results of these studies are then disseminated through different platforms, publications, online resources, EIDS Corner Seminars and the Development Policy Research Month or DPRM held every September. To shed light on key policy issues, the advice and expertise of the Institute's research fellows are also sought by policymakers, government agencies, private sector, and civil society. Since 1977, PIDS has completed numerous policy studies on a wide range of development topics. This brand of service has then translated to policies and programs that have improved the lives of every Filipino. Philippine Institute for Development Studies Service Through Policy Research In need of references for your research? Do you want a search engine that is easy to navigate? And do you want it free? If you are a student, researcher, or teacher looking for socioeconomic references and materials, then SERPI is for you. To access SERPI, just visit the PIDS website at www.pids.gov.ph and click the SERPI widget or type serp-p.pids.gov.ph. SERPI is an online database of socioeconomic studies and materials produced by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies and other academic and research institutions. SERPI has a wide variety of socioeconomic materials such as journal articles, books, working papers, policy notes, research papers, and newsletters. SERPI has 52 partner institutions that contribute publications to the database. SERPI has a wide coverage of materials encompassing 20 research themes. You can search by keyword or author, by publication type, by research theme, or year published. SERPI has more than 7,000 materials with full text that you can download for free. Enjoy searching! Visit SERPI now and follow us on Facebook. You may also send a message for inquiries. So what is BIDS? For over 40 years, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies or BIDS has been the country's foremost socio-economic think tank. It conducts rigorous and objective policy research and analyses that help the government in crafting relevant policies, plans, and programs in support of the country's long-term vision and development goals. PIDS pursues its mandate through three basic programs research, dissemination, and outreach. Through its research program, PIDS identifies and prioritizes studies, develops proposals, and conducts research on priority areas. The results of these studies are then disseminated through different platforms, publications, online resources,
Ideas Corner Seminars and the Development Policy Research Month or DPRM held every September to shed light on key policy issues, the advice and expertise of the Institute's research fellows are also sought by policymakers, government agencies, private sector, and civil society. Since 1977, PIDS has completed numerous policy studies on a wide range of development topics. This brand of service has then translated to policies and programs that have improved the lives of every Filipino. Philippine Institute for Development Studies, Service Through Policy Research. Hi, Ma'am Justine. Just checking. All right. In need of references for your research? Do you want a search engine that is easy to navigate? And do you want it free? If you are a student, researcher, or teacher looking for socioeconomic references and materials, then SERPI is for you. To access SERPI, just visit the PIDS website at www.pids.gov.ph and click the SERPI widget or type serp-p.pids.gov.ph. SERPI is an online database of socioeconomic studies and materials produced by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies and other academic and research institutions. SERPI has a wide variety of socioeconomic materials such as journal articles, books, working papers, policy notes, research papers, and newsletters. SERPI has 52 partner institutions that contribute publications to the database. SERPI has a wide coverage of materials encompassing 20 research themes. You can search by keyword or author, by publication type, by research theme, or year published. SERPI has more than 7,000 materials with full text that you can download for free. Enjoy searching! Visit SERPI now and follow us on Facebook. You may also send a message for inquiries. So what is BIDS? For over 40 years, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, or PIDS, has been the country's foremost socioeconomic think tank. It conducts rigorous and objective policy research and analyses that help the government in crafting relevant policies, plans, and programs in support of the country's long-term vision and development goals. PIDS pursues its mandate through three basic programs research, dissemination, and outreach. Through its research program, PIDS identifies and prioritizes studies, develops proposals, and conducts research on priority areas. The results of these studies are then disseminated through different platforms, publications, online resources, PIDS Corner Seminars and the Development Policy Research Month or DPRM held every September. To shed light on key policy issues, the advice and expertise of the Institute's research fellows are also sought by policymakers, government agencies, private sector, and civil society. Since 1977, PIDS has completed numerous policy studies on a wide range of development topics. This brand of service has then translated to policies and programs that have improved the lives of every Filipino. Philippine Institute for Development Studies, Service Through Policy Research.
In need of references for your research? Do you want a search engine that is easy to navigate? And do you want it free? If you are a student, researcher, or teacher looking for socioeconomic references and materials, then SERPI is for you. To access SERPI, just visit the PIDS website at www.pids.gov.ph and click the SERPI widget or type serp-p.pids.gov.ph. SERPI is an online database of socioeconomic studies and materials produced by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies and other academic and research institutions. SERPI has a wide variety of socioeconomic materials such as journal articles, books, working papers, policy notes, research papers, and newsletters. SERPI has 52 partner institutions that contribute publications to the database. SERPI has a wide coverage of materials encompassing 20 research themes. You can search by keyword or author, by publication type, by research theme, or year published. SERPI has more than 7,000 materials with full text that you can download for free. Enjoy searching! Visit SERPI now and follow us on Facebook. You may also send a message for inquiries. Welcome to the PIDS webinar series. Before we start the webinar, we would like to give you a few reminders. For attendees, your microphone is muted upon entry. In case you have a question, the moderator will read it during the open forum. For those attending via Cisco WebEx, use the chat box located at the lower part of the screen. Click the chat icon, type your name and affiliation, and your question, and send to all panelists. You may send your questions while the presentation is in progress. The moderator will read them during the open forum. For Facebook viewers, at least two questions from the comment section will be read by the moderator during the open forum. We will moderate all questions to ensure that they are relevant to the scope of the presentation. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to your active participation. Good day, friends, and welcome to our webinar this afternoon. I am Rowena Taliping, and I'm going to be your MC. Today's event will present the findings and recommendations of a PIDS DILG study that examined the usefulness of results matrices. These are tools for monitoring local government's contribution to national development. We really have an interesting and uh, relevant topic this afternoon, so I hope everyone will stay until the end of the webinar. And to formally begin our event, let me introduce to you our new president. He took his oath before NEDA Secretary Carl Chua on August 2. And prior to his appointment as PIDS president, he was senior research fellow at PIDS for 29 years, conducting policy research on labor and education issues. He is also considered one of the country's pioneers in impact evaluation research. 
Friends, let us now listen to the opening remarks of our new president, Dr. Aniceto C. Orbeta, sir. Dr. Orbeta, the floor is now yours. Good afternoon, everyone. Let me start by acknowledging the following officials took the time from their busy schedule to join us today. Besides, of course, of our distinguished panel of reactors from government, we have Department of Agriculture Under Secretary Virginia Orugo, Department of Public Works and Highways Under Secretary Maria Catalina Cabral, National Economic Development Authority Assistant Secretary Greg Pineda. Bureau of Internal Revenue Assistant Commissioner Marita Lorenzo, House of Representatives Congressional Policy and Budget Research Department Director General Romulo Miral Jr. and Executive Director Novel Bangsal, Local Government Academy Executive Director Thelma uh, Vicina, Directors and Regional Directors of NEDA, Department of Interior and Local Government, Department of Budget and Management, Senate Economic Planning Office, Bureau of Local Government Finance uh, of the Department of Finance, Banco Central ng Pilipi Pilipinas, Commission on Audit, Commission on Population and Development, Securities and Exchange Commission, Metropolitan Manila Development Authority, Ministry of Interior and Local Government uh, of ARM, and other officials who are here with us this afternoon. From the private sector, we have the Philippine National Bank First Vice President Rowena Magpayo, Investment and Capital Corporation of the Philippines Group, Assistant Vice President Serena Puertuliano, CPRM Consultants Incorporated Director for Project Operations, Christine Racho, Cargill Philippines Incorporated Philippine, uh, Corporate Affairs Director, Christopher Ilagan, Villar Sipag at Chaga Foundation Incorporated Director, Raigi Tamana, Center for Policy Studies and Advocacy on Sustainable Development, uh, Executive Director Maria Fatima Beliena, Caucus of Development NGOs, uh, NGO Networks, Philippine Executive Director Diani Lin Ocampo, Local Government Development Foundation, uh, National Coordinator for the Philippines, Antonio Avila Jr., Laguna Provincial Provi uh, Federation of Persons with Disabilities, President Anthony uh, Ribinki, uh, YMCA of La Union, President Andrew Cesar Rimando, Unang Hakbang Foundation President Oli Lucas, Green Relief Initiative Co-Founder and Executive Director Sara uh, Kiblatin, Masagaang Sakahan Dire uh, Incorporated Director Daniel Agustin. From the in international uh, organizations, we have the Asian Development Bank, Public uh, Management Specialist Go Nagata, and Independent Advisor Brian McCauley. United Nations Development Program Senior Economist Yammer uh, yeah, Ms. Ratch uh, Worki and team leader Luisita Hulungbayan, Luisa Hulungbayan, permanent delegation of the uh, Republic of the Philippines to UNESCO Department, uh, permanent delegate Island uh, Minjola Rao, U.S. ASEAN Business Council Chief Country Representative Elizabeth Cribasa, and Country Representative Margie Lim, UNICEF Chief of Social Policy Section Anjanit Sagisab. Also, like to greet our friends from the media. Finally, from the academy, we have Western Mindanao State University President Maria Clara Otso Torena, Philippine Association Col College uh, Schools of Business President Venus Agustin, Ateneo de Manila University School of Government Dean Ronald uh, Mendoza, uh, University of the Philippines Berata School of Business Dean Joel Tan Torres, uh, Polytechnic University of the Philippines Dean. At and Antonio uh, Omali, Malay College uh, Dean Jimmy Mala Maming, De La Salle University School of Economics uh, Associate Dean Michi Irene uh, Conchada, Southern Luzon State University Dean uh, Chuna Kayabat, and Pamantasan ng Lungsod ng Manila Dean uh, Los Biminda Gabor, directors of, from state, various state universities and colleges such as the Central Philippine University, uh, Technological University of the Philippines, University of the Philippines School of Urban and Regional Planning Graduate Studies, University of the Philippines at Los Baños, Pamantasan Lungsod ng Manila, Southern Luzon State University and Polytechnic University of the Philippines. Let me greet as well those who are watching through the PIDS Facebook and uh, social media pages of uh, our partner agencies. 
Today's webinar is a collaboration between the Philippine Institute for Development Studies and Department of Local Government, or DILG. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank DILG for constantly partnering with us in the conduct of studies that are relevant to local government units. We look forward to doing more researches with you. This afternoon, we will learn about findings and recommendations of the PIDS DILG study titled Assessment of the Provincial Slash NCR local government uh, unit results matrices in the localization of the uh, Philippine Development Plan or PDP 2017 to 2022 and, and the sustainable development goals uh, from our uh, very own research fellow Justin Sikat, the main author of the paper. Uh, to give you some context, all government agencies and instrumentalities, including local government units or LGUs, are mandated under Executive Order Number 27 to implement the Philippine Development Plan and Public Investment Program for the period 2017 to 2022. To ensure that local government plans are aligned with PDP, results matrices were developed by the national government. These were used in provinces and, and the national capital region to show how LGUs can contribute to national development, monitor their progress, inform uh, oversight agencies of their priorities and needs. The DILG and the National Economic Development Authority oversee the PDP localization airport. Uh, the paper assessed the effectiveness of the PDP result matrices in the government's localization efforts. It also uh, examined how government efforts fared in ensuring that plans in provincial and NCR levels stay attuned with the national development goals. The ongoing pandemic has underscored the importance of having local government units that are robust and capable, and whose programs and projects are aligned with the country's priorities and development goals and the national government priorities. In February this year, the NEDA uh, updated the PDP to make it more responsive to the core goals and challenges brought by the crisis and help the country recover and adjust to the new normal. Specifically, these reforms were geared towards enhancing implementation of the Universal Health Care Act promoting food security and resiliency, improving the quality of instruction in education, accelerating digital transformation, upskilling of the workforce, and institutionalizing the country's social protection floor. The plan also included strategies that are needed to meet the sustainable development goals and help every Filipino achieve the long-term vision of Matatag, Maginhawa, at Panatag na Buhay by 2040. The updating of the plan is timely as the government is bound to implement the Mandana's ruling next year. The increase of LGU's internal revenue allotment or IRA base means uh, additional budget for local programs and projects. It's therefore important to align the local government with development plans to organize, to optimize, to say the uh, utilization of resources and avoid wastage uh, at the grassroots. To give us a broader perspective on the localization of the PDP this afternoon, we invited NIDA Undersecretary uh, Mercedita Subilia and the League of Local Planning and Development Coordinators of the Philippines Incorporated National President Mario Nelios. We would like to thank you for accepting our invitation and we will look forward to hearing your comments and insights on the study findings and recommendations. To our guests and viewers, I encourage you to stay at uh, until the end of the webinar and actively participate during the open forum. Good day and thank you very much for your uh, coming here. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Urbeta. And to introduce our speakers and moderate the discussion, I now give the floor to, to Dr. Sheila Vichyar, the Director of the PIDS Research Information Department, Ms. Sheila. Thank you very much, uh, Wang, at magandang uh, apun po sa inyong lahat. I'm sure all of you are excited to listen to the presentation, so allow me to uh, uh, introduce uh, uh, the, the authors of the study and our presenters. So the PIDS study that you will hear today is authored by uh, Dr. Ch uh, Charlotte Justine Sikat with uh, assistance uh, from Ms. Angel Faye Castillo and Ms. Rixi Madawin. And to uh, present the highlights of the study is Dr. Justine Sikat. Um, a research fellow at PIDS. She has a PhD in business administration. 
a PhD in economics candidacy and a Master of Science uh, Management degree and a Master of Arts Economics degree, all from the University of the Philippines, Diliman. Her academic and professional experience is focused on public uh, sector economics and political economy. And as a former, uh, as a former professor of, uh, at UP Diliman, she has taught courses on public sector and development economics and fiscal and monetary policy. She is also an international consultant in the areas of public expenditures and financial management at the national and local government levels. Dr. Justine, the floor is now yours. Okay, thank you very much, Sheila. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Dr. Arbeta, and to the uh, our discussants, uh, Yusek Sambilia and Mr. Nilios. Um, Welcome everyone. I will be presenting to you today the results or the highlights rather of the study that we conducted uh, for the ILG, which was um, um, pertaining to the exercise of the PDP localization effort. Now, I could not have done this without the help of my co-authors, uh, Ms. Angel Fay Castillo, Ms. Rixi Banawin, and the assistance of Ms. John Camacho, as well as Ms. Lucy Melendez. So let me present to you today um, the local government's PDP SDG localization efforts as contribution to national development. All government agencies, instrumentalities, and local government units were mandated to implement the PDP and the public investment program for the period 2017 to 2022, as mentioned by President Urbeta earlier. Now, the localization effort itself, which was initiated in 2018, aimed to First, adopt a geographic-based perspective in planning and investment programming. Second, to strengthen provincial oversight of these. And third, to strengthen provincial city-municipality interface, dialogue, and database management. Now, the DILG and NEDA introduced the policy of drafting the provincial and NCRLGU results matrices as an instrument or mechanism to enable and approximate extent of alignment of the local development investment programs to the PDP results matrices and the sustainable development goals. As national government agencies are preparing for strengthened devolution and oversight with the Mandanus ruling, this study can contribute to these efforts. Now, just to give you a bit of a background and a picture for those who are not quite familiar with the government planning framework. So this is the, this upper, in the upper left corner, gives you a picture of the, how the Philippine Development Plan, uh, where it's anchored on and what its priorities are included. So in drafting the Philippine Development Plan at the NEDA, of course, it's anchored on the Ambition 2040 long-term goal of the Philippines, but it also incorporates the administration's social economic agenda. And this, is the, this happens always for, for each administration there to draft their own medium-term development plan. Now, in 2016, uh, the Sustainable Development Goals replaced the Millennium Development Goals, and the relevant um, uh, Sustainable Development Goals to the Philippines were also adopted and incorporated in the Philippine Development Plan. Now, the Philippine Development Plan contains the mission and vision of how the current administration sees where the government will be five years down the road. And in order to be able to bridge the gap to that vision from the current status, of course, you would have to have action. And these would be contained in the pro uh, programs, projects, and activities that are uh, prioritized in the Philippine Development Plan um, results matrices and the investment program. So the Philippine Development Plan results matrices contains the uh, measurable indicators that can help um, assess progress in the various uh, chapters of the development plan. I'll be showing you a summary later. And particularly for the specific indicators and uh, the outcomes and subsector outcomes that there are. Now, the NEDA also, apart from drafting this um, national results matrices, also drafted uh, regional results matrices, of course, and the regional development plan in order for um, it to be more location specific or geographic specific. Uh, in public sector theory um, of the local public good, this would actually refer to um, what you call the Thibault hypothesis, wherein um, localities will offer different array of goods and services of which voters will um, move to or vote with their feet to. So 
So theoretically, if you put it back to the discussions on decentralization and federalism, there would be different goods and services and priorities across different localities. And in the common literature, this is called the subsidiarity principle. So, so bottom line, it's anticipated that different regions would have different priorities, and this should be reflected in their development plans, as well as it should also be, um, be able to be monitored so the data must be available for them to be able to construct this. Now, let me show you a summary of the chapters of the Philippine development plans that we looked at. I'll explain the process later on that was conducted at the DILG um, with the DILG efforts. Now, these are the 16 uh, chapters that have indicators in the results matrices. So we have chapter five, people centered, uh, clean, efficient, and effective governance ensured. Chapter six, swift and fair administration of justice. Chapter seven, Philippine culture and values promoted and so on and so forth. Uh, I would like you to note that chapter eight here, economic op opportunities in agri and fisheries repeatedly came around in the regional summaries. So these were really priorities of the regions. Um, also would be chapter 10, which is human capital development. Um, uh, you would, I will be sharing with you later that um, uh, human capital development uh, came out in one of, in most of the top three across the regions as a priority in terms of the number of indicators. Now, for some regions, Chapter 11 was very crucial. Vulnerability of individuals and families reduced, as well as Chapters 19 here, which is the safe, efficient, reliable, cost-effective, and sustainable infrastructure facilities and services that are used by the population, and Chapter 20, ecological integrity ensured, and the social economic condition. So for each of these chapters, we have um, outcomes that and subsector outcomes that we want to be able to that the plan uh, aims to achieve um, and this is excuse the very heavy graph but um this shows you how it how the exercise was done in terms of the pdp localization effort so uh the provinces were asked to choose which indicators and chapters were relevant for their own provinces and draft a results matrix based on this so in this case, I'm just showing you the example of chapter five, ensuring people-centered, clean, and efficient governance, of which the subsector outcome is people-centered, corrupt-free, and transparent governance practice, of which the subsector outcome one would be accountability and efficiency in governance measures improved. So that's, those are the objectives in the first column. Now in the second column, provinces were asked to choose from the shopping list. Okay, which of the indicators were appropriate for their particular provinces. And I'd like you to note that in the case of um, the indicators, there, were, there are 155 sustainable development goals indicators, of which 68 of these are in the PDP-RM, of which 33 of these are available according to international definitions at the provincial level. Okay, this has importance later on when I share with you the rather odd uh, summary of um, indicators. Now, in the case of the PSA, they also identified the core regional indicators, about 98 of these, of which 71% of these were available at the provincial level. So this also has uh, implications later on. But apart from these, uh, local governments were also allowed to identify their own indicators. So you, we will see a, a great variation in the average number of indicators per region. The report, I did not include anymore today the report on the provincial because it's about uh, uh, oh, almost 90, okay, LGUs, but it's in the, the discussion paper. So in any case, um, for the shopping list of indicators, let's say um, for this one, the first one would be under accountability and efficiency, the percentage of LGUs complying to the full disclosure policy. Okay, so ideally the local government was supposed to tick or or fill up this particular, um, these particular columns if this was aligned with the SDGs of the Philippines and what the indicator source was. So that was also a challenge when we were summarizing the data. But ideally, there should be baseline information. So it was 2017 that was um, implemented, and then there would be the value of the indicator. And then there would be annual plan targets, 2018 to 2022. And then there should be the end of plan target. And then here I identified the various sources of um, data for this. So this is what provinces um, did back in 2018. They had to draft the results matrices. Now to also give you a bit of a background on the 
planning and budgeting framework or where the local government is situated in the national development planning. This is the result also of a 29 study, a 2019 study of ours. And it shows you here, let's just focus first on the top and on the bottom. On the top, you would see, as in the earlier slide, ambition natin 2040 is perceived to be the vision, the long-term goal of the country. So it's yeah, the development plans are um, supposedly anchored on these. Now, <clears throat> in the bottom row here, that's shaded in green, okay, this, this was the focus of one of our studies in 2020, the baseline study on fiscal and governance gaps, <clears throat> wherein we surveyed 1,373 municipalities to look at their practices in development planning to identify both infrastructure and governance gaps. So at the local level, the process would be the, municipal, the municipality would develop their own development plan and they would um, identify uh, programs projects and activities that would be prioritized in their local development investment program, which is valid for three years, so it covers three years, which should actually be broken up into an annual investment program. So they would prioritize in the first year of this LDIP, what do we want to accomplish? Is it to, to build a hundred, uh, a, a one kilometer of road, or is it to build a level two water system or what have you. So it should find its way to the annual investment program, which finds its way to the local budget, which is a budget ordinance. <clears throat> so that would be the local process. Now, where does it fit in in the national development planning process? Well, if you look at the column instead, so let's focus on the first column here. The first column shows you the Philippine development plan, which is um, the double arrow iterative. Uh, there would be inputs from the ambition in 2040, but there would also be current administration inputs here as well. So the Philippine Development Plan, which is downloaded or um, which regional um, NEDA offices identify which priorities are applicable to their region. I, I would rather say it that way. So, so there's also a regional development plan. Now the exercise that was conducted recently, the localization effort actually pertains to this link between the Provincial Development Plan and the Regional Development Plan. And this is really um, legally under the purview of NEDA, under the Regional Development Councils of NEDA. So, so that's what you have here. The current localization effort actually pertained to this. But the current effort also of localization tried also to strengthen the oversight function of the provincial government to lower levels of government, like the component cities and the municipalities within that particular province. That was also the aim. And the finding of the, the previous study of ours, 2019, was that this needed to be strengthened as well. Um, you have to get um, or align um, priorities with uh, lower levels of local government. So uh, let's go back to the Philippine Development Plan at the national level. So similarly, we also have the Philippine Investment Program, which shows you the um, prioritized programs, projects, and activities that helps bridge the gap to the vision in, envisioned in the Philippine Development Plan. Now, there are also regional investment programs, and here you can see that um, it's similar in that on occasion, uh, the lower level local governments would want to get uh, additional assistance or coordinated investments with higher level local governments and then with the regional government and so on and so forth. Now, the very interesting thing is that we have a five-year um, plan, but it has to get implemented in an annual budget. So there's a different um, time um, when it comes to the plan and the budget. So you have to divide your priorities across um, annual budgets and figure its way into the General Appropriations Act. Now, one interesting thing I'd like to, to, to note here is in terms of the annual investment program. So um, municipalities typically would have challenges in financing their prioritize programs and activities um, within their own budget. So pre, pre mandanas okay, the practice was either they would go to the provincial uh, government to get funding, or they would go to the Regional Development Council in order to get funding through national government agencies, or they would go directly to national government agencies to ask for additional funding through national government, local government unit support programs. And, um, and right now, it is still unclear as to whether this will be continued or discontinued in the implementation of the Mandanas ruling. Really. So that's the, the end of the background. And I'd like to go on to the policy questions and objectives. 
this study was really straightforward because no one really has, as the DILG had asked us to do, has ever looked or summarized all of the information. Um, and that's the objective of this study, to, to, sh to see how it can be appreciated and used by national government oversight agencies. So the objective is to assess how recent PDP localization efforts to ensure the alignment of provincial NCR LGUs to national development goals fared. The policy question was how effective were recent PDP results, major says, uh, localization efforts? Were the objectives of this met? Have these efforts resulted in aligned provincial city re regional matrices with regional development plan uh, results matrices? Can these be used to monitor progress and development in priority areas in each region? So we had a very simple methodology, mixed methods approach, sequential parallel analysis, desk review. We had key informant interviews and focus group discussions with both the ILG field officers and LGUs, although these were all um, virtual. Uh, and then we also have this small case study using the PDP accomplishment reports because one of the, 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 the directives is that apart from drafting a results matrix, you have to also draft annual accomplishment reports, of course, to be able to monitor progress. Now, did LGUs comply with the PDP localization efforts? Yes, they did. 97.4% of provinces did, while 94.1% of NCR LGUs did. Now, let me give you the national summary. So this is the national summary. And let me share with you how this was actually um, drafted, okay? Uh, how we came up with the summary figure. So what we had was the provincial uh, results matrices, like I showed you earlier. And we had to code these and count these, okay? In some cases, uh, these were incompletely filled uh, by the provinces. So we had a challenge in summing up the average number of indicators which is why later on we'll see, you, you can see there's a, there's a variation of indicators here. But at the same time, let's say for some of the chapters, let's say chapter eight on agriculture and fisheries, some of the indicators like increased, increased uh, product or um, increased per crop, um, the results major says drafted by some of the LGUs, like in the case of CAR, and I think it's also region eight, they identified the target per crop, which is very detailed information. That's why we have um, big numbers right here in the average number of indicators. So, so we did the summary by the provincial level, and then we summed across the regions, but we got the average instead so that we wouldn't get such a huge number. So it was the average, I'm presenting you, the average number of indicators by region. So it's divided by the number of provinces because you can imagine how large this data set was. And it was a challenge to um, try and remove for duplications. But, but this, is, um, this gives you a, a good picture, a pretty good picture. Since this is the first crack at this data, it gives you a pretty good picture as to the priorities and the availabilities of, let's say, indicators, um, those aligned with social, uh, sustainable development goals, those that have baseline information, which is very important, and those that have targets, which is very important also because it shows a commitment. And you, we will see later on that there are fewer indicators with targets than baseline information. So if you take a look here, the average below here, excluding NCR, so we excluded NCR uh, typically because it would skew the distribution. Per region, there would be about 340 um, in average indicators. And 37% of these are aligned with sustainable development goals. So we just matched. Um, we based it on the, the, the table where the the results matrix where the provinces were asked to identify which were aligned with sustainable development goals. So about 37% of these were aligned with sustainable development goals. 82% um, of the reported indicators had baseline information. I'm sorry, this should be percentage um, there. Uh, and then 67% of these um, indicators did have targets. So that's the national summary for you here. Now let's take a look at the regions, okay? So for the region, let's say region three, okay? Region three had an average of 181 reported indicators. Okay, 52% of these were aligned with sustainable development goals. 78% of these had baseline data and 61% of these had targets. So this is very interesting. The top three PDP chapters in for region three were chapter 10, human capital development, chapter eight, agriculture and fisheries, and chapter three, vulnerability of individuals and families reduced. So this is tied also with chapter 20, ecological integrity. 
Now, the top three SDG aligned indicators were human capital development, uh, ecological integrity, and sustainable infrastructure facilities and services. Now, with the most number of baseline and target data, which were the chapters, human capital development, agriculture and fisheries, and sustainable infrastructure facilities and services. So that's how region three. So, so if you go through the discussion paper, you'll see that the different regions have differing priorities. Um, in the case of NCR, so let me show you, because this shows you the, how, how I mentioned at the beginning that uh, different localities would have different priorities. So an average of 106 reported indicators in the case of NCR, 10% of these were aligned with SDGs, 96% have baseline data, and 66% with targets. Okay, so the top three PDP chapters were, curiously enough, Chapter 8, Agriculture and Fisheries, um, and then there was Chapter 7, Philippine Culture and Values Promoted. So this is unique. Um, this has not appeared in any of the other, uh, other regions, if I'm not mistaken. And Chapter 5 would be People-Centered, Clean, Efficient, and Effective Governance Ensured. So I think this would be expected, especially here in the National Capital Region, where we're very vocal about um, improved governance. Now, the, in the top three with SDG aligned indicators would be Chapter 8, Agriculture, Fisheries, Chapter 7, Philippine Cultures, uh, Culture and Values Promoted, and Industry and Services Expanded. The, the indicators with the most number of baseline and target data would be for culture and values, uh, agriculture, and people-centered, clean, efficient, and effective governance. Now, let's take a look at the case study where we examined the PDP results matrix accomplishment reports for monitoring. So in 2018, after drafting the RMs, uh, the DILG and the, um, and the NEDA were uh, asked the local governments, the provinces, to, to draft an accomplishment report, both for 2018 and 2019. So, so that's the purpose of this, this case study is to show how the drafted RMs can be used for monitoring. Now, of the 90 provinces in NCRLGUs that drafted an RM, those that submitted accomplishment reports were only 44 in 2018 and 37 in 2019. Now, we looked at provinces of regions 1 and 10. Why? Because we wanted the province uh, regions that had provinces which submitted for both years, 2018 and 2019, so we could see how we could compare it. Now, region 1 and region 10 accomplishments a summary. So we see here that different provinces and consequently regions have different priority areas. These provinces are also performed differently in terms of achieving their targets. So here in the first column, you see region one and region 10 in the second column. Um, they have different top priority. For region one, it's human capital development. For region 10, it's uh, vulnerable individuals and families. But they both have agriculture and fisheries in their top three, okay? Now, in the case of Region 1, all provinces submitted accomplishment reports for both years. Uh, region 10, only two of five submitted. Uh, in Region 1, Pangasinan was the only province that improved in hitting targets from 2018 to 2019. Uh, in Region 10, only one of the five provinces submitted accomplishment reports for both years. Now, the case study, uh, let's, say, let's take a look at Pangasinan accomplishments. So this was all from the, the summary matrix that we, we, we drafted. So there was an improvement in overall uh, results matrix accomplishments from 8% of indicators in 2018 to 14% in 2019. Now, accomplishments were in these areas, agriculture and fisheries, human capital, gains from demographic divide, sustainable infrastructure. And of the reported accomplishments, those that reached targets were higher in 2019 at 74% compared to only 55% in 2018. For Lanao del Norte's accomplishments, there was a decline in overall accomplishments from 57% of indicators in 2018 to 34% in 2019. Now, the accomplishments were in agriculture and fisheries, vulnerability of individuals and families reduced, and sustainable infrastructure. Now, of the reported accomplishments, those that reached targets were higher in 2019 at 51%, compared to only 35% in 2018. So, uh, the proportion of targets that were reached in 2019 was higher, although the, the number of the proportion of indicators that were accomplished was lower. Okay. Now, for the key interview, informant interview results, this one, the objective was to get the perspectives of those who had implemented this at the level, which is why I'm very happy that Ms. President uh, Nidas is, is with us. Um, 
we talked with both uh, those at the DILG regional local government offices as well as those at the LGU level. Now, overall, um, well, of those that we had interviewed, majority of key informant interviews, uh, in informants interviewed from both LGU and DILG believe in the relevance of creating this and their usefulness in identifying and clearly defining priority areas for investment as well as monitoring and evaluating progress. Though implementation was initiated by the DILG NEDA through the conduct of regional workshops, some provincial governments conducted their own workshops, including lower level LGUs. Now, for some provinces, lower le level LGUs were given the opportunity to give input. So they were distributed with forms that they could accomplish ahead of time before the workshop. Um, but uh, they, uh, there were cases where in the lower level LGUs did not submit any inputs to the drafted, uh, for the drafting of the results matrices. Now, human resources was also one major concern in this exercise. So there was talk of lack of manpower. So there is a need to assign someone to do this task, localization. Um, there's also lack of technical capacity um, raised by the, um, those that we interviewed. And um, there was also a suggestion from one of those in the local government that to, to make it easier to minimize the efforts of local government officers, to make uh, results matrices codes consistent with the annual investment plan codes because they are already familiar with this if this um, initiative to be would be continued now the concern of the exercise of some of the local government units was that this was encroaching on local fiscal autonomy um, it's perceived as an exercise that requires that saying to lg you say you have to prioritize this However, um, this could also be in the messaging and it's part of the recommendations later on, that it's not so much as uh, imposing the priorities of the national government, but, but trying to elicit from the local governments what they um, prioritize in the own local governments and how they can contribute to national development. So the general findings, the PDP localization effort was well received and is believed to be a useful tool in identifying priority areas of LGUs and their contribution to national development. There is a demand from LGU officials that implemented this itself to institutionalize and integrate this as part of the development planning process. Now, the RMs could show areas where technical capacity building and budgetary support could be given to local governments. And um, there is a need, though, to ensure the correct completion of the results matrices in order to be able to um, have correct assessments. Now, what are the recommendations? First, to institutionalize the drafting of results matrices with local development planning. Uh, this, there should be a strengthened linkage between planning, let's say the results matrices, and the investment programming, local development investment program, budgeting outputs and outcomes. And this was raised when we presented this to our principals, uh, the TILG, DBM was there also, and the NEDA. And they said that um, there should be a way to trace what is in the plan and how much is allocated to it and what in order to be able to define what out, what outputs and outcomes more importantly it contributes to and right now there's a current effort at the blg gd at the dilg to um create codes for the results major status and to eventually perhaps maybe align them with the aip um but this is still being developed right now um as well as there are efforts to have an eldip so doing it online so that would make summarizing all of the information that we did so much easier. Now also on institutionalization, there's a need to enhance capacities to facilitate accurate compliance, okay? The second main recommendation is to, to ensure that data is available. So for some LGUs that we interviewed, they already had established data systems that they drafted their ecological profiles on. But it's important that other to note that other LGUs had challenges in, in having data and data accessibility. So Perhaps also efforts of this should be aligned with the CBMS Act that is also um, prioritizes the, um, um, the construction of databases, especially for the poor uh, LGUs. Now, also under ensuring data to establish management information system where data will be um, input and summarized. Okay? And lastly, to improve the information and education campaign to highlight that this is the local government unit's contribution to national development not so much as an imposition by the national government as to what they should do. So uh, I end there. Thank you very much. I, I went a bit over time, but thank you, Sheila.
Thank you very much, Justine. That was a very uh, interesting uh, presentation. Um, you, you mentioned that LGUs have a high rate of compliance with the PDP localization agenda. It's at, it's at 97%, right? However, if we, if we dig deeper, I, I think um, we can see some um, um, nuances as to the quality of uh, localization that is uh, that is uh, going on. Uh, you mentioned the summary table shows minimal alignment with the SDGs. It's below 50 percent. Indicators with no baseline data uh, and about 30 percent of indicators without targets. So perhaps we can unpack these issues during the open forum. So yes. friends, to enrich our uh, enrich our discussion, we uh, invited experts to comment on the study's findings and recommendations. And we will hear first from the country's primary socioeconomic planning arm in charge of the crafting of the Philippine Development Plan, as well as in um, the localization of the PDP. And we're very honored to have with us Under Secretary um, Masadita Azombilia. Um, she specializes in agriculture and rural development, and according to her, her involvement in these fields have become more meaningful with her with her appointment as Undersecretary of the Regional Development Group, which supports the country's goal of promoting equitable growth across our regions and ensuring that national development priorities are supportive of and in line with the goals of regional and local development. USEC Sumbili is affiliated with various international research organizations such as the uh, International Food Policy Research Institute based in the United States and the International Rice uh, Research Institute and the uh, South, Southeast Asian um, Regional Center for Graduate Studies and Research in Agriculture, uh, both of which are based in uh, Los Banos, Laguna. Yusek Sumbili obtained her Bachelor of Science in Mathematics from the University of the Philippines, Diliman, and her PhD in Agricultural Economics at the University of Minnesota in the United States. Yusek Sumbilia, ma'am, the floor is now yours. Thank you, uh, ma'am Sheila. Uh, allow me to acknowledge and thank the study team headed by Dr. Justin Sika, together with Ms. Angel Faye Castillo and Richie Madawin, and of course, uh, the Department of the Interior and Local Government, or the DILG, for commissioning this study. To all participants in this webinar, uh, good afternoon to all. Indeed, like what we have heard from PIDS President Orbeda, the study on local government's PDP and SDG localization efforts as contribution to national development is really very relevant today for two important reasons. One, national government agencies and LGUs are preparing for the full devolution in 20, starting 2022. And second, we are now in the threshold of preparing the next Philippine Development Plan, or the PDP, and the Regional Development Plans, or the RDPs, and as well the Local Development Plans, you know, those in the provinces and in the municipalities and cities. The Mandanas ruling, as we commonly refer to, will change the fiscal landscape of the country as more resources from the national government will be transferred to the LGUs and based on DOF, Department of Finance Computation as of June 2021, the LGUs will have an internal revenue allotment, which is now referred to as National Tax Allotment or NTA of around 959,959.04 billion in 2022. That is about 27.48% increase from the 2021 IRA. And to enable the national government to manage the fiscal impact of the Mandana's ruling, it institutionalizes, in, institutionalized a policy on full development, devolution, through EO138, where LGUs are expected to play a bigger role in delivery of services. The LGUs need to be prepared for this bigger role. The national agencies have to prepare and plan thoroughly as well to help achieve the very objective, not only of the devolution policy, but the Philippine constitution itself to develop the capabilities of local governments to deliver basic services, social services, and critical facilities to their constituents 
increase productivity and employment, and promote local economic growth. We all recognize this critical role of local governments in supporting the achievement of national goals and targets. The administration's zero to 10 point economic agenda and our commitments to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs to reach our long-term vision of a matatag maginhawa at panatag na buhay. They are the pieces of a puzzle na kailangan magtagpi-tagpi para mabuo, makita ang final product, no? So the, this role has to be further accentuated in the next three years prior to the full implementation of the devolution as local governments start to assume the implementation of key projects and other development activities that are being done now by national agencies. The convergence of national and local government efforts during this period will be critical to help accelerate local econo economic growth and promote more inclusive governance to benefit all communities, including those that may have been least benefited because of their distance from growth centers. This convergence should start with a formulation of agencies as well as LGU's devolution transition plans. And as I have mentioned earlier, the lessons learned from this study and PDP and SDG localization efforts can really help provide guidance in the convergence of devolution transition plans, particularly the alignment of national and local targets and indicators. We note here that the study was conducted primarily to gauge how well the targets of current PDP, RDPs as mirror images of the PDP were carried down and adopted or reflected in the LGU plans and monitored by the LGUs. These targets should be in the result matrices of the LGU plans with the respective indicators. If we're going to the lessons learned from the study, I would like to express that it has been encouraging to know that the Philippine, the PDP localization uh, uh, efforts or exercise was well received by the LGUs. This confirms that the LDILG NEDA JMC1 on guidelines on localization of Philippine Development Plan 2017-2022, results matrices and sustainable development goals issued in 2018 was a step in the right direction to pave the way for in instituting improvements in our planning, investment programming, and budgeting systems, in particular, aligning all these processes. The study nonetheless revealed that while the localization was well received, there seems to be the need to improve the efforts. And the average only about 41, I think, or 37% of the indicators in the local plan result matrices are aligned with the SDGs and the PDP. Most of these aligned indicators are also in the chapters, in the PDP chapters and human capital, human capital development, agriculture and fisheries, reduction of vulnerabilities of individuals and families, infrastructure development facilities and services, and ecological integrity. The study further observed that some chapters or sectors have more accomplished indicators, and these are again the chapters covering the same areas mentioned. Our experience in PDP formulation confirms the, the observation. The, the human capital development chapter indeed included more indicators and this is because of the greater availability of administrative data from more frequent conduct of surveys, especially those on health and education. On the other hand, other PDP chapters, such as those in governance, urban development, and peace, which are also a critical part of Philippine development, and of course, in achieving the SDGs, have little or little or no baseline indicators. The 72 identified core regional SDG indicators, or what we commonly uh, you know, uh, uh, call the core SDGIs, 
collected by the Philippine Statistics Authority or PSA are also mostly on human capital development and only a few fall under other sectors such as economic and infrastructure development, environment, disaster resilience, and security. Again, sectors that are also of critical importance. To supplement this, nationally generated indicators, some regions have indeed included proxy indicators. This explains the differences in the type and number of indicators being monitored by the regions. For instance, as was shown already on one of the slides of uh, Dr. Asikat, Region 12 has been collecting, uh, our count is 388 indicators, but uh, on the, the slide was showing 336 indicators, much more than the 155 initial list of the Philippine SDG indicators and the earlier mentioned 72 core SDGIs identified by PSA. In Northern Mindanao, in an attempt to harmonize the indicators to be collected and used, the DSDG Regional Committee came up with common indicators to be considered by all LGUs as their core local SDGIs. But there are only 34 out of the 72 core SDGIs on the national level that are being monitored uh, at, the, at, the, at the LGU level. These indicators will further be reviewed and enhanced by the DILG-10, the NEDA-10, the PSA-10 to ensure complementation with the core DSDGIs and other regional indicators contained in the RDP results matrix. The studies additionally observe that the regional indicators are a mix of outcome and output indicators. In fact, LGUs generally monitor output indicators. These indicators have to be reviewed, segregated, and rectified to align especially with outcome indicators of the regional and national plans and contribute more appropriately in measuring performance towards achieving targets. The issues on availability of reliable local data and the lack of capacities of the local level have been raised many times by agencies and by the LGU representatives, uh, the LGUs themselves. This is again shown in this study. With their bigger responsibilities and larger budgets, it is high time for LGUs to seriously consider improving this aspect of their development function. They need to improve their baseline data and regularly update their socioeconomic profile to reflect recent developments that are critical in updating local plans, such as the provincial development and the physical framework plans, the comprehensive developments uh, at the provincial level, and the comprehensive, com comprehensive land use plans of municipalities and cities. And more importantly, in ide and identifying emerging challenges and the appropriate interventions to address such challenges. This information will likewise help align targets across plans, both, both vertically and horizontally, and identify the relevant indicators to measure performance towards the identified targets. It would be good if the alignment of plans, targets, and indicators can happen in the formulation of the devolution transition plans. This may still be difficult because of the data constraints, but I would really like to pose this as a challenge to be strongly con considered. There are great opportunities to overcome this challenge in the very near future because of the Mandana's ruling. The passage and eventual rollout of Republic Act 11315 or the Community-Based Monitoring System Act and the pilot implementation of the PSA's provincial product accounts are welcome initiatives to improve the list of local RMs and SDG indicators. Complementing this, upcoming events would perhaps be for LGUs to consider the creation of a statistics office or at the list create a statistics position who would be the primary respond, who would have the primary responsibility of developing and managing local databases. 
many events that have been unfolding need strong local government interventions, managing the impact of climate change, the risks brought about by disasters, and more recently, those by COVID-19 pandemic can be responded better by LGUs because of their being on the ground to feel what their constituents need. Possession of good databases that are regularly enhanced and updated with information from timely monitoring of progress of sectoral activities will be a good instrument to help LGUs prepare and respond better to emergencies and identify programs and projects that would be needed in their locality. They, this, this, is particular, uh, this is particular capacity enhancement is one is one among a few others that LGU must hurdle to be effective, must hurdle to be effective under the more devolved regime. If achieved, the DILG NEDA JMC1 will not just be adapted for mere compliance, but will result to stronger collaboration among agencies and LGUs in planning processes and budgeting processes and in jointly formulating min meaningful targets and tracking accomplishments. Hopefully, the subsequent assessment of the alignment of RM indicators for each sector will yield better results, surpassing the mere 41% alignment shown in the study. Perhaps then, with the availability of more granular data, more indicators will be identified to measure outcomes rather than outputs. Convergence and alignment of plans should also take into consideration the planning processes and timelines. The latter is critical for the mere fact that local plans and priorities should really inform regional and national plans. In this regard, the JMC1 may need to be revisited in terms of the synchronization of national and local planning and budgeting calendar. This synchronized calendar is also important to improve the batting average of local projects being included in the NEP or the National uh, Expenditure Program. In the exercise that NEDA is doing together with the Department of Budget and Management and other relevant agencies, we found that only about 40% of the RDC endorsed infrastructure projects get allocation in the NEP for the period 2016 to 2020. We acknowledge the tedious work that went into the study, particularly on the counting and checking the consistency of RM indicators for each region and each province aligned with the SDGs and the PDP. The follow-up study, if ever there will be done, may need to look into other uh, quantitative information like performance of agencies or LGUs and other factors that influence perhaps the likely trends of the indicators. Doing so may be able to uh, provide other means to measure, uh, 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 to measure or evaluate performance towards achieving the targets. The year 2030 will be the reckoning period of the SDGs. This means one medium term planning uh, period that is 2023 to 2028, plus two years to set our next courses of action in the LGUs, this is close to three updating lo of local plans. A good portion of these years will be focused on planning to overcome the challenges brought about by the unprecedented events like the COVID-19 pandemic, which was conceived, uh, which is which was unconceived when SDGs were adopted back in 2015. Neither was it expected when the 2017-2022 PDP and RDPs were formulated in 2016. This study provided an initial assessment of where we are and in general points to the need to get our acts together and strengthen coordination in planning, implementation and monitoring of development progress across levels of governments. This need was manifested in terms of the alignment of plan targets and relevant indicators to measure performance. We concurred to the recommendations of the study while there are clear deficiencies, it is important that we must build on what we have achieved so far and uh, seriously to work some more, not just to show the numbers, but to set our country's development direction 
to one that is truly responsive to the needs of our people and provide a better quality of life for them. Maraming salamat po at magandang hapon sa ating lahat. Maraming salamat din po, Yuseka Sumbilia, for your uh, valuable uh, comments, uh, for uh, also for shedding light on some of the issues that uh, we found in the study, such as the multi multiplicity of the <laughs> indicators for for some regions, no, and uh, for uh, uh, emphasizing the need to align our par, um, our plans, targets, and indicators at the local level. Okay, and, and also um, ways on how we can achieve that. At this point, um, okay, uh, let us listen to the comments of our second discussant, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mario Anilios, no? Mr. Nilias is the national president of the League of Local Planning and Development Coordinators of the Philippines. Um, he is also the provincial uh, planning and development uh, coordinator of the provincial government of Iloilo. He has 40 years of uh, experience in government and more than 16 years in teaching grad in uh, teaching graduate uh, graduate school subjects such as development planning, public administration and um, other subjects. He is also a registered environmental planner uh, and has a bachelor's degree in agriculture from the Central Philippine University in Iloilo City and a master's degree in public um, management from the University of the Philippines in the Visayas. Mr. Nilios, the floor is now yours. Thank you very much, Yela, and thank you very much. Uh, at the outset, uh, so I have a presentation, PowerPoint presentation. At the outset, uh, let me express my grateful uh, appreciation and thanks to PIDS and uh, DILG for giving me, on behalf of the League of Local Planning and Development Coordinators of the Philippines, to be one of the reactors in this very important endeavor on the localization of SDG and PDP 2017 to 2022. Uh, among others, the local government units at various levels uh, provincial, city, uh, municipality, and barangays have a very important role in the localization process. Next slide, please. As president of the League of Local Planning and Development Coordinators of the Philippines, I was invited to be one of the discussants in this webinar. However, I would like to make it clear that the League does not have a collegial position regarding the localization process but it is incumbent upon me or upon us as local planning and development coordinators our important and significant role in the localization of the PDP and SDG. Our experience in the localization process is by virtue of our positions as local planning and development coordinators provided for by Section 476 of the Local Government Code of 1991. Our experiences and learnings is founded on the memorandum issued by DILG on 29 August of 2019 regarding the guidance on the fiscal year 2019 to 2022 Philippine Development Plan and the Sustainable Development Goals localization activities. Next slide, please. In terms of policy questions and objectives, let me revisit the policy questions and objectives forwarded by the study. The objective asked to determine how rest efforts to ensure the alignment of provincial and CRLGUs to national development goals. And in my mind, this could be answered with the following questions or answer. Yes, no, or not sure. Not likewise, effective or no or not effective. Next slide. On the policy questions, though no empirical uh, study would show the answer, but my experience and learnings would tell me that in terms of the question of how effective were the recent PDP and result matrices localization efforts, I would say, say that it is effective. Were the objectives of the PDP localization efforts met? And I would say, yes. And have these efforts resulted in aligned provincial city? Yes. And do 
the resultant provincial city result matrices contain information such as baseline and target indicators and timelines needed to be able to monitor progress and development and priority areas in its region. I, and I would say yes. Next slide, please. On the scope, data, and methodology, this study used several methodologies, such as mixed method approach, sequential parallel analysis, desk review, TIIs, and HDGs and case studies. These various methodologies are relevant in determining key policy questions posed by this study. By using several methodologies, authenticity of the result is affirmed. And I understand the result both reveals qualitative and quantitative results. However, the clarifying questions that I may raise is that how is the SDG indicators embedded in the set of indicators with the PDP indicators? And I'm sure this would be answered subsequently. Next slide, slide please. On hard facts as shown in the study, the result matrices shows or showed a high percentage of responses, almost 95% of the respondent LGUs, 74 out of 76 provinces, and 16 out of 70, 17 NCR LGUs have responded and submitted the result matrices. This simply implies compliance to the memorandum of DILG on the localization process. On top of that, I could attribute it to the relentless efforts of DILG and NEDA in trying to require LGUs to comply and submit the result matrices for consolidation. The result also reveals that out of the 16 regions, 82% and only 67 had indicators with targets. It could be surmised that many regions failed to set their baselines and targets. The regional summary shows a clear depiction of SDG and PDG localization. Next slide, please. And citing Iloilo's result matrices, out of the 431 reported indicators, only 13.50% is aligned with SDGs, 52% baseline data, and only 47.5% of the indicators are with targets. Almost half of the reported indicators do not have baseline data, which is 48%, and with annual targets of 54.3%. With such data, SDG and PDP localization could not be de determined and clearly ascertained. The results showed that it should be further studied and corrected and find out the reasons why baselines and targets are not determined. Next slide, please. There are two regions where case analysis were done by the study, and that is regions 1 and 10. The case studies provided an important insight into the performance of its LGUs in terms of PDP and SDG localization. This is an important component in monitoring the progress of the localization process. Through the case study, the performance of each LGU and region is analyzed in order to determine appropriate recommendations to further improve the localization process. Next slide. PII results and general findings. Undoubtedly, the KII results showed result matrices are important tools in monitoring the progress of, localiz of localization. The lack of manpower, the lack of technical capacities, poor coordination are just of the few of the concerns and challenges in making localization process effected, effective and relevant to the local government units. 
the process of institutionalization of the localization process is relevant though PDP targets changes in varies and every change of Philippine government administration. Other than the memorandum circular, enabling legislation could be enacted to effect full institutionalization. Just like when the community-based monitoring system or the CBMS was put into law by virtue of Republic Act 11292, otherwise known as the Seal of Good Local Governance Act of 2019, or Republic Act 11315, otherwise known as the Community-Based Monitoring Systems Act. By doing so, the institutionalization transcends political boundaries. And for the last slide, these are my recommendations. Number one, uh, DIRG, DBM, NEDA, and DOF GMC number one series of 2016, dated 18 November of 2016, on the updated guidelines on the harmonization of local planning, investment programming, resource mobilization, budgeting, expenditure management, and performance monitoring in coordination and fiscal oversight to include PDP and SDG localization tools in monitoring and coordination. Clearly stipulate that the local planning and development office through its local planning and development coordinator shall spearhead the localization efforts by virtue of its functions as per section 476 of the local government code. Number three, incorporate PDP and SDG localization as one of the performance indicators in compliance with SGRG. And the other additional recommendation that I, that I make is that the enactment of enabling law to strengthen institutionalization process of the localization process, just like what we did with CBMS and SGRG. And finally, continuous capacity and technical assistance to be provided by oversight agencies to the local government units. Thank you very much and good afternoon to everyone. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Anilius, for your uh, valuable comments. So at this point, we will now proceed to the um, open forum. Um, there are only a few questions in our chat box, but uh, please keep them coming. And we have ample time for uh, the Q&A. So at this point, um, well, before we proceed to the Q&A, I'd like to tell that we won't have a poll today. However, we will pick uh, three names from our WebEx participants and each of them will uh, receive a PIDS notebook. And I will announce their names before um, we close the webinar. Okay, so we can now entertain uh, some questions. So aside from uh, Dr. Sikat, uh, and Mr. Nilios, we will also, and, and um, Yusek, uh, you can still Yusek, okay, Yusek Merce is still there. <laughs> Hi, ma'am. So we'll also be joined by Director Anna Bonagua of the ILG's uh, Bureau of Local Government Development, uh, just in case there are questions for the DILG. Okay, so, okay, um, questions. Here's a uh, question uh, from uh, Cecile uh, Basawil. I think, um, I I'm not sure, um, Justin, if you'd like to answer this, because this is one of the uh, comments in your key informant interview that they um, were in the, the respondents said that uh, sort of, you know, this localization is sort of in encroaching on their autonomy um he's she's asking cecilia is asking if if um how the lgus um define autonomy as they claim that the pa pdp is encroaching on their autonomy since sabina since it is my understanding that is it is a vision okay be, because the the localization is supposed to, you know, ensure alignment of their local development plans with uh, the national uh, uh, goals, no? So, meron ba kayong nakuhang 
more deeper uh, meaning or more deeper explanation why why they said that during the um, KII? Um, actually, uh, thank you for that question. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you, Ms. Basawil. Um, there was no discussion as to the definition of the autonomy, but during the discussion, um, the the one from the local government was expressing how the additional work that was imposed mm. on them in drafting the localization effort was a taxing, but at the same time also um, that perception that it, it was like in the other cases of national government programs that assist local governments, sometimes these come with uh, strict uh, guidelines that they should spend it only on these particular areas and these priorities. Mm -hmm. um, that was the initial perception, I think. That's how I understood the respondent um, to think that it was something like that. But which is why I said it's really important moving forward in the messaging that it's really not imposing what the national That's government right. wants on local governments. It's really trying to elicit from the local governments what they um, are contributing or what their priority area. So it's two way, you know, it could be um, what they can contribute to national development. That's one, mm -hmm. which is part of their mandate in section two of the local government code. But at the same time, it's also how, let's say, if these are one of the priority LGUs that are poorer, how the national government can also assist them or how, let's say, strategic planning could be done in that particular region in the case of these areas. So that's why um, I think it's more in the messaging and the information right. and education campaign. And I'd also like, Sheila, if I may, no, I wanted to thank you, Sexumbilia, and uh, President Nilios also for being here. Mahalaga kasi nakikita rin natin yung perspective, especially si President Sumbilios, ay Nilios. Matagal na po siyang um, planning and development uh, coordinator. So I really appreciate um, yung inputs niya. And if I can, I wanted to comment on he put up a valuable point regarding the Ilo Ilo um, summary. Um, he said it's important moving forward if there would be future studies to understand why um, why those are the figures. Is it because there's a lack of um, harmonized indicators, as Yusek Sumbila also mentioned earlier, which is which is nice also. That was our challenge in trying to come up with the summaries and come up with the narrative. So it's nice that the NEDA also recognizes this and is engaging in efforts to come up with harmonized uh, indicators um, for this uh, moving forward. So thank you. That's it, it, it did not come up. The definition of autonomy did not come up. It was based on the experience of those we interviewed with previous mm -hmm. national government uh, programs that assist local government. So thank you. Mm -hmm. I fully agree with you that the right messaging is, is important. And I think um, workshops were held by NEDA and uh and uh, uh dilg when they introduced this localization agenda perhaps we can ask uh uh Sumbilia first and then a uh, director bonagua um how they conducted this this workshops to make sure that the uh, the objective of the lo localization is properly communicated on the ground um Yusek Sumbilia? Uh, thanks uh sheila but i wasn't well i wasn't really involved you know, uh, on the ground and the localization. No, uh, I think uh, see uh, Director Bonagua will probably Bonagua. Yes, she, she will probably be able to you know uh, expound that or uh, describe to you better. You know the yes. what happens, what happens in that uh, in, in that localization activities. Thank you, Yusek. Thank you, Yusek. Director Bonagua, ma. Um, maraming salamat. Uh, well, uh, ang, ang effort natin sa RM ang simula ng when we uh, started uh, localizing or orienting local government units on the Philippine Development Plan. It started right after the development or the, the finalization of the Philippine Development Plan in 2017. So we started the rollout in 2018 to local government units. And it seems that uh, parang uh, automatic um, uh, next step is to how now to uh, make sure sure or how 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 to measure or uh, sabi nga ni uh, uh, Dr. Justin is to uh, local units in the Philippine Development Plan so that uh, so that's the reason why for local government units uh, came about no that there should also be a results matrix that local government should uh, um, 
look up into and try to and commit to and try to achieve which are uh, in line with the uh, national development goals and objectives uh, also siguro to answer the question uh, yung are we imposing or are we imposing on local government units or we are are we uh, parang already stepping on their autonomy siguro hindi naman because um uh, the, the way that we introduce this uh, kasi kung if, if we would like pwede natin ipa Yan, ipa impose na lang that LGUs do whatever is in the Philippine Development Plan. But what happened is that we asked them what are the priority needs of their localities, the mm -hmm. development mm -hmm. agenda of their of their uh, local government units. Uh, as it came out in the study, no iba ibang regions, iba ibang LGU, yes. iba ibang lumalabas na priority. So mm -hmm. and therefore collectively as a country, no uh, across levels of local governance, while they have their own priority needs and development agenda, hopefully this all will collectively uh, uh, contribute to the attainment of the entire Philippine Development Plan. So, yun, yun yung uh, objective. Siguro, we have to strengthen the messaging uh, so mm -hmm. that local government units would understand the objective of the introduction of the results matrix. Thank you, Sheila. Salamat, uh, Director Bonagon. And, and your, your um, response is also related to the question of Ian Agatep. He, he asked, how can the RMs be presented better to BLGUs? To understand how their performance can affect overall LG performance. So, sabi nga nyo, ma'am, uh, the right messaging is important. And talagang pinaliliwanag naman yung ano yung um, kahalagahan ng localization and how to use the results matrices um, uh, for more effective uh, monitoring of uh, the localization of uh, uh, the PDP at the at the go local government level. Okay, let's go to other questions. Uh, we have an interesting question here from uh, yeah, Ivory Galang, who is from I. Okay, I, yes, uh, Mr. Nilios, go ahead, sir. So, may, may, I, may I appropriately answer the questions with regard to the localization process? No, yes, sir. From experience in region six, actually, uh, we had a series of uh, workshops, no, okay, uh, it was initiated okay. by DILG NEDA and PSA to the mm -hmm. provincial offices. Opo. And then after that, uh, we were we were you know, uh, codes on the identification of indicators applicable to the province, and then after that, uh, it was the province who conducted uh, also workshops with MLGOs and MPDCs, mm -hmm. and finally there's a post activity meaning there's a, basically a really a series of of uh, workshops and consultations uh, to look to the local government units to really appreciate and. Uh, you know, upgrade their 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 skills and uh, capacities in terms of how localization process uh, uh, is being done. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Mr. Nilis, for sharing your experience in your pong uh, um, uh, area. No, uh, talaga pong mahalaga na niyan dito kayo para mas share po niyo yung yung best uh, sort of a good practice na pwede ding uh, gawin sa ibang uh, locality. Okay, so let's now proceed to the question of Ivory Galang, and this is a uh, very important one because it uh, discusses about uh, how to ensure the sustainability of the localization effort. And sabi niya, how can we achieve this, yung sustainability, when local chief executive's term expires every three years? No? And I think Mr. Nilios mentioned some recommendations such as, uh, you know, similar to the C CBMS, it already is an act. And then he also mentioned um, something about including the... Um, the localization as part of the uh, seal of local governance uh, criteria. Do Director Anna, would you like to comment on this, ma'am? Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Um, uh, actually, the lower part, uh, salamat kay Engineer uh, Nilio sa kanyang recommendation. At ito ay uh, kasalukuyan ng pinag-aaralan ng DILG. Yung DILG Memorandum Circular 2016 ay hindi lang pala DIL, Joint Memorandum Circular 2016 ng apat na oversight agency, NEDA, DBM, DOF, at saka din DILG regarding the harmonization of local planning or local PFM processes. Uh, ito ngayon ay kasalukuyang nire-review in line na rin sa, uh, sa ating uh, devolution efforts at itong pag-integrate, uh, pag-institutionalize nitong mga bagong tools and efforts uh, that we are currently, well, we have currently introduced to local government units. So, kasama po itong uh, 
institutionalization ng results matrix na isasama na, na natin sa local development processes and governance uh, processes and local governments. Uh, yung uh, results matrices as part of the RM or compliance with LCUs in the results matrices, Pwede po yan. Ang, ang kaya lang po sa kasalukuyan ay ito ay uh, inintroduce pa lang natin sa provinces at saka sa mga cities and one municipalities in the NCR. So pwede naman pong uh, for provinces. And we have seen naman, di ba, uh, 90% plus compliance of local government units or the provinces to the results matrix. So ito, ito ay isa ng justifiable uh, indicator that can be included in the results matrices. Um, ngayon, Uh, kasalukuyang din nire-review ang indicators ng uh, Seal of Good Local Governance uh, sa resource matrix pala. Seal of Good Local Governance in the of the new law as well uh, at uh, uh, sa susunod na implementation by 2022, wala pong uh, Seal of Good Local Governance assessment for the last two years, ng 2020 at saka ngayong taon, uh, magsisimula ulit ito sa 2022 with the new indicators na pursuant to the new law. So, pinag-aaralan din po natin na maisama ito as one of the indicators, at least for the provinces and the highly urbanized cities in Metro Manila. Salamat po. Salamat din po, uh, Director Bonagua. Um, okay, we have... Dumadami na po ang mga questions natin sa ating chat box, which is good. We have a question from Rodmir Daton. Uh, okay, um, this is about um, having a more uh, more inclusive um, localization. Ano? And he's asking how we can engage the SGUs and other nonprofits. To ensure that they are they also contribute to the localization agenda. Um, di ba may mga local development councils naman tayo, ma Mr. Nilio. So based po sa experience ng uh, uh, Iloilo, baka po pwede kayo, may ma-share po kayo kung paano po nyo na-engage yeah. yung ipang sectors, sir? Actually, parang cascading process ito eh. From DILG, NEDA, and PSA, we did uh, not in the part of the province, no? It's basically the planning office who tried to initiate the consolidation of data also from various offices in our jurisdiction like uh, health, agriculture, etc. So basically we gathered that and we consolidate and then we had, you know, also a series of, uh, of, of, of workshops on our part, you know. But I think uh, that, that's correct, no? I think hindi pa ito bumabagsak sa municipalities eh. Kasi of course the, the study focuses only on provinces. And of course, talagang one thing pa talaga yung localization sa level ng municipalities. I think uh, because yung CBMS would only, uh, I think it only mandates uh, data data gathering in the, in the municipalities, not in the province. So may, what, what I'm saying is that I think this could be incorporated in the data analysis sa CBMS. No? Kasi uh, if you take note on the law, uh, the creation of a statistician is on the level of the municipalities and cities, but not in the province. So wala kami talagang hand uh, as far as, and it would be, you know, the consolidation would be submitted to PSA, not to the province. So yung, yung, yung arrangement is that kung gusto namin malaman yung mga data ng mga municipalities, we would communicate with PSA, not directly with the municipalities. So the, yung, yun talagang arrangement, no? So yeah, I think um, talagang idagdag pa to sa municipalities at i-capacitate yung municipalities at ipasok sa CBMS uh, uh, requirement. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Engineer Nilios. Meron po bang gustong idagdag ang ating ibang mga panelists? Otherwise, we will we will uh, uh, go to the next question. Okay. Um, okay. I have a question regarding... Yes? Uh, akala ko may narinig. Okay. I have a question regarding the RM ano, as a monitoring instrument. And I think... In a way, na answer na rin ito sa sa uh, kanina sharing ni Yusek, no? What improvements or modifications do you see should be made on the results matrices um, in terms of its implementation and in terms of the results results matrices themselves, no? Meron ba kayong pwedeng um, Yusek sumbilia in terms of um, the relevance or the completeness of the matrices? Yung Yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Sheila. Well, the results matrices, dinedevelop yan primarily to measure nga 
yung mm. performance. You know how we are moving towards the targets. Mm-mm. And in each of the chapter, nandi, na, nasa PDP ito, tsaka sa RDPs, and hopefully nga, you know, the, the, the local plants also should have it. Ano? It may not, the local plants may not, you know, really uh, have results matrices that are really as complicated as what we have in PDP and the RDPs. No? Kasi ang dami talaga yung tinitignan natin na sectors sa PDP yes. at saka RDPs, no? So, nandiyan yung health, nandiyan yung agri, nandiyan yung governance, nandiyan yung culture. So, yung lahat ng mga outcomes niyan or the objectives for each of this chapter, aside from the from the national national uh, objective, ano, there are objectives for each of, this, uh, of the chapters, of, for each of the sectors, that should really lead towards the achievement of the of the national goal or the national uh, objective no so uh talagang ano talagang even i you know we admit that in in our the results matrices in the pdp are still not complete yes. and we it's, it's a work in progress to... naman diba really uh usec uh, subilio okay. yes that's right so but in the in the municipalities in the cities no i think you know they can only if they yung sinabi ko kanina no there are may may ano may may yung yung local governments you know have these basic functions to deliver basic social services mm-hmm. critical facilities to their constituents increase productivity and employment and promote local economic growth so if they can only just provide targets for those and results matrices or indicators towards those targets i think that's already a very big you know uh, uh addition to you know to 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 getting to that national goal no so talagang 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 uh, mahirap uh, i said it's it's really you uh, know it's really it's really a work in progress in many of the in many of the uh, kahit na yung yung ating uh, sdg na targets which is about 268 200 about more than 200 you know ang na-define ng ng UN ano how many can we really just monitor that's right. and then mm-hmm. if we go really down to the to the to the local levels talagang maliit na maliit yon mm-hmm. but i think you know what is really important is that you know um measuring what can really you know uh, help us achieve the national goal uh, which is really you know so you sustainable growth poverty reduction and you know and oh, and and those things so yun, yun lang ang aking yun lang masasabi mm-hmm. kasi it will take some some time before we could really you know improve on yeah. our uh, you know databases you know and and collecting all this granular data that we need and yung, yung are... community, yeah your community um What's that now? Yung CBMS? Mm-hmm. I think that will be a very, very, you know, uh, uh, very, very good activities, you know, exercises that will help us, you know, produce all those granular data that we will yeah, do. Yeah, I, I fully agree with you. And in fact, you mentioned several um, indicators na kulang tayo ng data like governance, urban, urban development piece. Yes. No? Kasi ang, yes. ang focus natin is more yung sa health. Nutrition, yes, exactly. Education. But there are other yeah. really important of this really, important you know, yeah. are yeah, it's related kasi talaga sila eh. So it's really the whole, it's a holistic. It's a holistic ano and really uh talagang ano uh dapat meron tayong uh we just have to, you know, continue uh collecting some data, some more data. And mm-hmm. I think the local government the units, the local government should really be very big part of this. Yes, yes. Okay. And Director Anna, with more resources pouring into the um, local government units come 2022 with the um, implementation of the Bandana Suling, can we expect, uh, you know, better implementation, more adapt, uh, better adoption of, of the CBMS by uh, at the local government level? Is that the direction that we are, you know? I, I And what what is the DILG doing so we can have you know a, a be, we can have better databases local databases through the C, CBMS uh, mga LGUs um 
Uh, yes, Sheila, of course, uh, with greater resources comes greater responsibility and also okay. the expectation. Okay. Yeah. Spider Man, ba? <laughs> and the expectation of, from the public of uh, better services. You know? But when we mean yes, better well. services, mm -hmm. we mean more responsive to the needs of their local of their constituents and up to standards set by national government uh, mm -hmm. agencies and continuous no kasi wala nang bawian itong mandanas ruling so from 2022 <laughs> thereafter they will receive that increased amount uh, of resources so yun yung expectation uh, right now uh, we have been rolling out uh, uh, the the, or the the we were capacitating local government units for the smooth transition we just ask them to prepare the devolution transition plan which they will be carrying out for 2022 or up to 2024 in yung three years transition period that is indicated in the executive order 138 so we're capacitating local government units on how to go about changes in their organizational structure their competency requirements as they absorb uh, new programs wala namang new functions that are being turned over or devolved to local government these are the same as uh, has been devolved in uh, Section 17 of the Local Government Code, devolved to them in 1991-1992, as well as the new laws or succeeding laws passed after the Local Government Code. No, may mga new laws that mandates new uh, functions and uh, responsibilities to local governments. Kasama dyan yung uh, Local Disaster, uh, Disaster Risk Management Act na kailangan ni DRMO at saka yung kanilang pagpaplano for the 5% uh, Disaster Risk Management. And marami pa, no? marami pang pinasa na law uh, after the Local Government Code. So yun yung mga uh, things that we are doing to prepare local government units. And uh, we're adjusting also all our performance assessment systems so that uh, mm -hmm. uh, we can capture and um, uh, parang direct the increased amount towards the direction of the national government priorities then no? while alam natin no they have their own respective uh, needs they should collect, they should also be adhering to the uh, uh, the the bigger umbrella of uh, the national development goals and priorities oh director bonago does this mean okay sabi nga nyo, uh, with with uh, more resources come uh, more responsibilities no so does does this mean uh, stricter implementation of the awarding of the seal of local uh, local good governance mas mas magigibang strict mas dadagdagan ba yung selection uh, yung yung criteria may, may ganun bang uh, direction um i would not say stricter no but uh, it would entail expansion of the expansion. indicator because uh, they will have uh, greater responsibilities. No, mas madaming programa that will be downloaded to them, and they have greater resources now to to really uh, uh, spend for the services for their constituents. So I think uh, what will uh, change is that there will be expansion of the indicators and considering the new law, uh, the thematic areas has been increased also from seven thematic areas to. Uh, uh, 10 thematic areas, so mas madami talaga ang coverage of the seal of good local governance this year, next years. And yun din, yung, yung the extent of uh, uh, ano, extent of service that they should be delivering, lalaki. So mag-expand yung indicators and mag, because of the expansion or ex, uh, paglaki din ng expectation ng public at ng DITLG oh, sa yes. responsibilities and performance ng ating mga local government. Mm -mm. So kailangan nat talaga natin ipagdasal yung mga LGUs natin na itong transition na ito ay uh, uh, good luck, good luck sa kanila. Of course, nandiyan naman ang DILG and NEDA and our other government agencies to to uh, capacitate them to assist them in this transition diba ma'am okay. okay so we have a question um justine i think this is for you uh, from juan perez does your study allow for us to understand if the sdg linked indicators of the provinces were actually funded in the aips and approved budgets also is it also possible to see if the expenditure actually resulted in the accomplishments. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that, Sheila. And I know I'll tag uh, Director Anna in a bit um, because this came out actually. Thank you for the question, Mr. Perez. And this is actually also related to the question of Mr. Ernesto Bautista. Good afternoon, Paul. I met you before. And uh, Ms. Jean Lopez as well. Very similar to find the link between planning investment programming, budgeting, and to the outputs and outcomes. 
when we presented the results of the study to, the, to our principals, as I mentioned earlier, that would be NEDA, DBM, and DILG. Um, <clears throat> both DILG and DBM, I think it was Eustec Pasqua still, who also said that this could be the basis for actually strengthening that link. As it is right now, we cannot yet uh, establish that. But the way that the um, results matrix is, uh, the example I showed you earlier is drafted. It shows the outcome, the chapter, the outcome, the subsector outcome, and the subsector outcome one, if there be. And there's the indicator there. Now, there were a couple of provinces that were very excited that they added the programs that would help to achieve the indicators in that. So if you link that, actually, with the, um, and then you break, link it to the LDIP, which you eventually break down to the AIP, and you find itself in the budget, then you will be able to complete the loop that if that program, in fact, was funded in the local government budget, and you can go back to the results matrix and find where it's situated among the different indicators. So that is the aim. That is what they want to do. Now, the DILG and DBM right now have current efforts. Uh, first, two, two ways no? to be able to make it easier to process that. Part of it's expenditure tagging, if, if you might think about it mm -hmm. that way. Um, so that there's this LDIP, the ELDIP, so electronic LDIP program being set in motion. But apart from that, um, one of the suggestions of those that we interviewed at the local government level was that the indicators become aligned with the um, annual investment program codes so that mm -hmm. it would be easier to trace it. And at the same time, I know that there are current efforts at the DILG that there are being, they are harmonizing the local development investment program codes so that we can track the whole thing eventually down the road. So. I'll pass it on to Director Anna. Thank you. <laughs> Director Anna? Yes, thank you, Justin. Uh, yun po, uh, sinabi ni Justin na, na uh, the RM is not yet linked uh, to the planning, but that, that's the intention. No? If, if the provincial government committed to achieve this list of uh, targets indicated in the results matrix, they would find ways on how to make this be part of the plan of the province as well as the component cities and municipalities uh, within their jurisdiction. So that is uh, the idea. But uh, kung sa mechanism, no, wala pa siyang ganong one is to one uh, uh, tool or instrument that will make that happen. But that is the intention. Right now, what we have uh, is the link from plans to investment program to the budgets of local government units and uh, eventually to the uh, uh, to their implementation of to the results of the implementation of their uh, programs and projects uh, that's the reason why we have we have the, the four oversight agencies have been introducing digitalization of their system so with the budget and the ELDIP and the ESRE so that we can connect uh, the systems and eventually uh, measure alignment uh, from the to the results matrix now we, we have to find ways on how to do that yet but I think uh, the, the idea now is uh, that if the province commit to this set of targets, which are uh, aligned with the national and uh, regional results matrix and uh, also responsive to their respective needs in their results matrix, they would influence as the oversight uh, LGU for, for cities and municipalities, they would have to influence the the programs and projects or the CD, right. the plans and the budgets of their component cities and municipalities for the provincial gov or the, the, the province, hindi lang provincial government, for the entire province to, to achieve those that they have committed in the results matrix. So that's the idea now. But then in terms of systems and procedures and how to, to do that and make sure that that happens, wala pa po ngayon. And that, that is something that we will work on in the future. Thank you and very much. Very, we are very glad that they, uh, our LGUs are excited to have that <laughs> happen uh, mm -hmm. sana very soon. Thank yeah. you. Kasi yung mga questions na natatanggap natin dito, may marami tayong mga participants from the different LGUs eh. So, maganda maganda na ganito na pala sila ka-excited ano, in terms of uh, you know, um, making the localization effort more effective. You are thank you for your for your response Justine and Director Banago actually. Um, may related question nga si Ernesto Bautista, tinatanong niya kung link na ba 
yung results matrix sa uh, or uh, sa ating uh, LGU budgets and expenditure programs at nasagot na yani Director Bonagua. Okay, uh, let's go to our other questions. We have one here from Eileen uh, Mendiola Rao, and he is asking about uh, you know. We have new thematic indicators like uh, culture, creative uh, cities, and oceans and coastal services. And tanong niya is, um, eto bang mga new them thematic indicators na ito ay nakafactor in na sa ating uh, results matrices? Meron na bang? Or, or is this a, a part of parang um, um, part of the to-do uh, to, to further improve the, the RMs? Yes, uh, Director Bonagua or or uh, Yusek Sumbilia. Maybe things first. Hey, come along, Lisa. Anna, come along. I, I I would think to you to repeat the question. I was listening to something else. Cause <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, we all do that, ma'am. Uh, multitasking. <laughs> multitasking. <laughs> Responsibilities. Okay, ma'am, the, the question is from Eileen Mendiola Rao. Uh, sabi niya, how do NEDA and LGU factor in the development of new thematic indicators such as culture, creative cities, and oceans and coastal services? Well, yeah, uh, those are, I know, those are key key areas that are they are actually now in the pdp if you look at the mm -hmm. pdp there are all of these areas that you are mentioning are already in the pdp but as i said some indicators that you know that uh, 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 we would want to have to measure the targets uh, to be reach the objectives in those particular sectors i meant you hinahanap hanap pa namin uh, in the coastal, yung mga coastal uh, uh, issues or so coastal objectives, some of them we have already and they are generated by usually our implementing agencies like the DENR. Siguro sa culture, uh, some would be coming from the Department of Education probably or the uh, what is this, National Culture, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, we, we really try to strive, you know, to reach out to different uh different agencies and stakeholders to help us identify you know the the feasibility of you know putting that uh, by a, a particular indicator as part of the results matrix and that will depend on how you know how uh uh datas the data will become available the other thing is meron din kami na, ano, a challenge and you know wala kami talagang mahanap na indicator so we are trying to do studies uh, to determine what exactly would be an indicator like for example resiliency mm -mm. It's, it's a multi it's a multi you know it's a multi uh, risk is something no say you can be resilient on something but there's also some other other things that you you you, sh you need to be resilient to kaya naghahanap kami ng resiliency index how we can how we can, you know, come up with the resiliency index to which we can, you know, measure performance toward to, to a target. So, talagang ano, talagang it's really ano, it's really a challenge, talaga, to be able to get, you know, uh, the the exact data or exact exact indicator to measure performance of an objective of certain sectors. Thank you, Yusek Sumbilia. Kanina, ma'am, uh, you explained why, uh, you explained uh, the reason for the multiple, multiplicity of the indicators, no? Like, let's say, yung iba may regions na 300 to 400, yung indicators. Okay. Yung isa, car, I think, was 695. Sino po yung nag-check, ma'am, na, okay, da, sino po yung nag insure Pero kasi silang, ano, Meron sila kasing regional, like for example sa SDGs to, no? Meron mm. kasing regional SDG committee. And so, on their part, on their own, no? Kasi hindi nga nila ma... Na ma uh, and this this is the one that has to be aligned, eh? That has to be mm -hmm. thermo-harmonized, right. no? Mm -hmm. across, across the different regions, across the uh, local government units. There probably needs to be... Uh, you know, a, a, a number of indicators na dapat pare-pareho pare sila. Pare-pareho sila, tama. Mm -hmm. And then, there should be additional, depending on how they see. Kasi ang, ang, 
ang ang luka, ang mga mga areas, mga regions are different, no? So there are probably mm-hmm. some priorities in one region that are not priority in other regions. So those are additional that they may want to really monitor, no? But we have to really set a number of indicators that should be, you know, that should be the same for all para makita natin talaga and th- which are really important to input to value add sa national yeah. natin para Because makita you know, natin kung how they are contributing. You are very right. Because it's important for comparability eh. To compare one region sa it isang sa, sa, sa ibang region hindi hindi dapat pare-pareho ng indicators hindi yung eto 200 something eto 600 something anyway but good start for our uh, LGUs our uh, regional provincial L- and uh, municipal LGUs kasi sabi nga niyo um, they are already in the right direction so fine tuning um, enhancements at uh, with with the BILG and 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 Neda at the hem, this is not uh, impossible. Miss okay. Yes, ma'am. Do- oh, director, uh, Bunago, yes, yes. Uh, I can add to uh, uh, Umbilia's, uh response. Uh, tama po yun, no? uh, the the PDP resource matrix is actually complete nandyan lahat. But then I think with the uh, Pagdating sa local government units, that's the reason why also na iba-iba yung number at iba-iba yung indicators because they have to uh, parang situate the indicators within the respective areas kung ito ba ay relevant sa kanila. No, but then to answer the question, yung kung yung mga tatlong binanggit na no, as because of the passage of the SGLG Act, there are new uh, uh, thematic areas which were included. Dati meron na ring somehow uh indicators along these areas but then ngayon meron na silang sarili nilang thematic uh, concerns no among the 10 uh, areas so iba, ang mga bago ngayon ay tourism heritage and cultural development uh social protection health responsiveness sustainable education and youth development and with these new areas or thematic areas in the sale of food local governance the LGUs will be finding ways in how how they can promote or uh, this uh uh, 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 the achievement of outcomes along these areas within the respective programs and uh, budgets kasi kailangan makita yon na meron silang efforts and initiatives and accomplishments and improvements in the outcomes along this area. So, most likely uh, in the coming siguro kung magtutuloy-tuloy talaga ito yung results matrix, we'll be seeing more of these indicators uh, in the results matrix of the or the provincial and uh, uh, NCR results matrices kasi uh, kumbaga, we are already weaving the performance assessment to the commitments in the results matrix. Thank, Thank you, you very much, uh, Director Bonagua. Uh, another thing that I, I, I think I picked up from, from the um, uh, report from the presentation of Chestine, the analysis made by Chestine and her, and her team, is the, uh, no, the overstating of the reported alignment. <laughs> Also, yung presence of uh, overstating then yung presence of baseline data and, and the number of indicators with targets. How is the DILG or the NEDA addressing this overstating or overreporting issue or overstating issue? Because that will lend some questions to the valid- validity of the report then na nakukuha natin, ma'am. Over, I I don't seem to understand what is overstating or what is oh, over. Justine, uh, this came from your yes. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it is. Yeah, thank you for that, Sheila. Uh, this is actually pretty much also related, Sheila. It's a good thing you noted that to the to the discussion in the because of the lack of the harmonization of the indicators. Mm-hmm. So there are numerous indicators, which is why the caveat in the report is that the figures might be overstated. In fact. So, so that that that's really the main challenge. Um, because when we were summing across first provinces and then we sum across the regions, Region. we had a challenge because um some would have six hundred indicators and some would have four hundred. So, so th- that concept applies to even the estimation of the SDG aligned indicators as well as the baseline indicators as well as the target indicators, just because. There was some, um, and I'm glad that um, Yusek Sumbilia mentioned that there's really a need to harmonize the indicators mm-hmm. across okay. regions. And I saw a comment though, um, 
of course, we will recognize, it should be recognized that there are different indicators that apply to different areas depending on their priorities. That clearly is the case. But let's say, for example, um, it could be sharpened because I know that the, there are 98 PSA core regional indicators and then there are uh, 72 um, SDG indicators that could be brought down to the region. These are the things that, that still needs to be worked out. And I think Yusek Sambilia also and Director Bonagua also mentioned this earlier. So thank you. Thank you, Shida. Yeah, yeah. There was a, a comment from Rodmir that one that, uh, yes, um, it, it would be good to have core indicators, but there should be room for LGUs to innovate. Yes. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Thank you. Okay. We have um, a comment here. A uh, question from, okay, Ivory again. Hi, Ivory. Ivory is from uh, PIDS. With more resources given to LGUs, will LGUs also invest in modernizing their record system, like digitizing their records, publishing their expenditures and accomplishments in their website? This will help increase the transparency and accountability of L uh, LGUs. Perhaps we can uh, ask uh, Engineer Nilios to respond to this. Uh, sa experience po at sa plano po ng inyong probinsya, ano po ba yung, uh, in terms of modernizing your record, uh, recording system, sir? Engineer? Okay. Engineer is Engineer Nilios. Uh, did you uh, hear my the question, sir? Okay, perhaps he's having problems with his connection. Baka pwedeng, uh, Director Bunagua, uh, would you like to, to give your uh, views on this, ma'am, based on your conversations with uh, the uh, with the uh, LGUs, ma'am? Um, yes, Sheila. Actually, right now, in, in view of the pandemic and the limitation in uh, uh, in the mobility of our workers, no, uh, na fast track yung digitalization, mm, digitalization, uh, okay. uh, the practice of e-commerce among local governments. No, many of our local government units have already uh, computerized, uh, digitalized their transactions that involves the public. Let's say our their business permit and licensing system, and uh, the different uh, services that they provide their clients, and even. Uh, uh, the the arrangement for work from home work from home arrangement among their staff so i think this requires um syempre yung uh, uh, practice of the or infusion of technology in their day to day operation and in their governance systems and processes so uh, the pandemic uh, has actually facilitated that no? we are on that yes. direction but i think this this situation right now uh, facilitates yes. the realization of those uh, noon una dreams lang natin so yun marami na uh, na local governments uh, forced to good uh, to automate to digitalize right. uh -huh. to incorporate e-commerce in their uh, governance processes yeah, yeah. Uh, Sheila I'd like to add to yeah, yes uh, what Director Ana said yeah 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 so thank you thank you Ivory for that question actually it's an important question and in response to the latter part of it you publishing their expenditures accomplishments mm -hmm. in their website um, ever since 2010, the, the DILG has been implementing what you call the full disclosure policy. Um, and I believe that um, part of that is for the local governments to post in conspicu conspicuous, areas conspicuous areas in their locality the, the, the annual investment program and the budget. And if I recall correctly, I haven't, I studied that at the earlier part with Asik Acosta, but that, it wasn't there uh, anywhere. But that's what I recall, the full disclosure policy. And I think it was extended to apply to the website. Uh, so I'm not sure, but it's really a matter also of the voters really getting involved and, and you know, taking a look at this as well. So I think the full disclosure policy might help to address that also, but of course, that means you would have to have an up and running website with uh, uh, stable internet as well. So thank you. Yeah. Uh, Sheila, may I? Uh, yes, yes the full disclosure ahead, policy go. since 2010 until now is part of the sale of good local governance. So the LCUs okay. are required. And more, more especially now, uh, okay na yung uh, publication in their websites and or mm -hmm. uh, three conspicuous places in their locality. So either the municipal hall, markets, or uh, Inform information centers of local governments. 
Thank you very much, Director Bonag. I fully agree with you about what uh, in what you said about digitization. Truly, if there is a certain silver lining sa pandemic na ito, it has fast track our digitization journey. Okay, may marami po, may mga, uh, mga ilan ilan pa po tayong question. Um, from Director Dan, sa, Director Dan Agustin of Masaganang Sakahan, uh, Justin, this is for you. Is there congruence between the criteria and awarding LGUs and achievement achievement of their PDP targets. Um, I think he's uh, he's referring to the seal of local good governance, or I'm not sure kung PCF ba ito or what. But awards given to LGUs. Awards given to LGUs and the PDP. Yes, awarding LGUs. Is there a congruence between sabi niya, criteria in awarding LGUs and the achievement of their PDP targets? PDP I'm not quite sure. That's a tough question. Maybe, <laughs> Director, what I can think of is, well, in terms of, again, one more time, please. Uh, let me, what is the question? Okay. Uh, is there congruence between the criteria in awarding LGUs and the achievement of their PDP targets? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, okay. the criteria would be the seal of good local seal governance of local for, for the PCM. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. PC, yeah, yeah. That would that would be it. But Director Bonagua, uh, the okay. floor is um, yours. I think. Yes, uh, let me try. Uh, well, siguro ang gusto niya makita is yung the, the real outcomes happening okay. as, as 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 indicator for uh, recognizing local government units. What we have right now is the seal of good local governance. Though we understand that, uh, where we all know that many of the indicators are still on the output basis, no. But we're trying mm -hmm. our best to pull it, push it to the outcome. However, we realize that. If outcome na, it will not be solely the responsibilities of local government units to produce those those outcomes because national government agencies are equally uh, responsible or equally uh, contributing to the achievement of outcomes that are happening in local government uh, levels. No, so uh, hindi natin hindi namin talaga ma push that it should be dependent on the outcome in providing in recognizing local governments. Ang, nakakaya pa lang natin are really outputs where we can see that local governments are really accountable for such indicators hanggang outcome pa lang. But I think the ultimate goal is to push it to the uh, outcome level. No? Ngayon, output level pa lang. Uh, so, yun ang ano. Uh, siguro, um, kasi yung, yung uh, achievement of the PDP targets, baka, kung inire-refer niya yung results, matrix, uh, results matrix. matrices of the provincial governments, uh, these are the ones that they themselves actually um, parang, uh, identified, identified. Uh, that, that they they would like to achieve for their region. So uh, it, it will vary across regions, you know, as we have already found out. So it's it will be very hard for us to uh, parang to 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 have an assessment across all local government units using the results matrix because this varies across LGUs dependent on their priority and development agenda. Uh, but then, uh, magandang pag-aralan yan. Thank you for the suggestion that will give us some idea on how to push forward uh, performance assessment of local government units. Maraming salamat, uh, Director Bonagua. Okay, another very interesting question, this time from Arjun Ansai. And this refers to um, the engagement uh, of the state universities and the academy in, uh, in local development planning as well as in monitoring. Um, I'm not sure if direct uh, uh, Engineer Nilius is still with us, but uh, I would like to ask Director Nilius kung paano nila ito ini-implement sa, sa um, kanilang probinsya. But uh, perhaps, uh, Director Bonagua, would you like to, to comment on this? Um, how uh, how the um, uh, state universities and and the academe are are uh, engaged at the look at the local level uh, in terms of a planning planning and monitoring of uh, development plans um okay uh well um the DILG is in constant parang constant uh, collaboration with our with the leagues of local development planners of the Philippines. No, this is the body uh, composed of the local development plan coordinators in LGUs uh, in the nationwide in the Philippines. So, uh, 
we have the regular training programs for them. Meron kaming uh, anong CPD. Basta meron kami regular training programs for the competency upgrading of our local planners. In terms of uh, state universities and colleges, we we had a uh, uh, an a partnership uh, before sometime in 20 wala pang pandemic no 2019 I think 2019 just before uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we had a uh, collaboration with the uh, UP Surf uh, uh, capacitating uh, uh, state universities all over, hindi lang dito sa, sa, sa Luzon, but all over Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, uh, for them to be able to provide capacity building to the uh, local government units in terms of uh, development planning. So I think that that's the only the, the effort that we have right now on uh, uh, collaborating with uh, um, academic institution on how they can provide assistance. Kasi continuous dapat yung assistance to local government units. Local government lang, units. Hindi lang local development processes, but as kasama din yung mga local, uh, yung mga bagong development uh, agenda of the national government. So hindi naman laging present ang DILG and NEDA, DILG. but the state universities are there in their localities to provide them uh, some assistance and expertise in terms of planning, the planning yes. process and the planning direction. Thank you very much, uh, Director uh, Bonagua. Um, Yusik Sumbilia, would you like to share, um, provide your views on this? It's okay. Okay. Yeah, of course. You know the the SUCs are you know are really a, a big part of you know uh, helping in in uh, uh, providing inputs and uh, you know. Uh, contributing to 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 the local localization process ano uh, in fact in the in the dito sa ano sa paggawa ng PDP and RDPs mm -hmm. the state right. uh, yeah state uh, universities and uh, colleges are really part of really uh, 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 providing inputs on the objectives and the and the and the data, what they what what data they have, what they they data could they, they could commit, what indicators they could commit. So that should also be a no. That should also be practiced even more at the local level. Because right. there are there are so many. You know, each regions, sometimes provinces have several state you know universities and colleges. So I think their involvement in in this whole process should really be you know should be really tapped. Para, ano, para makatulong sila. Thank you very much, uh, Yusek Sumbilia. Dr. Yap, um, Dr. Uh, David Yap, uh, has something to contribute uh, to, 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 to this question. When can you, uh, can you enable his audio so he can speak? Sure, ma'am. Okay, is ready, uh, Gwen? Okay, Dr. Yap says he was team leader of the project director Bonago mentioned. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, in ayos lang po. Okay, Dr. Yap, you now have yes. the floor, sir. Yeah, uh, good afternoon to everyone. Yes, uh, the so can you enable your video so we can see you, our no. audience can see you. I'm not I'm not dressed properly. <laughs> okay, it's okay, sir. Your voice is more than enough. Go ahead, sir. Uh, this was a project with the BLGD, with Director Anna Bonagua and the SLGT. Uh, we were tasked to train. Uh, the, the problem is that not all SUCs have the capacity you know, to do uh, urban and regional planning. So the okay. school of Urban and regional planning in UP uh, was tasked no, to train SUCs all over the country. So, since the budget was limited, uh, we we chose SUCs on the basis of their geographical location no, uh, in Luzon, Mindanao, and the Visayas. No, uh, we even developed a handbook uh, that they can use after the training uh, to further assist no, local government units. Uh, 
uh, so the handbook is still in the process of being finalized or by the SLGP. But uh, the the plan was uh, the DILG will tap the SUCs that we trained in local development planning. No, they will assist the LGUs where they are located. The problem is we were hit by the pandemic. No, and this somehow uh, derailed that plan. But I guess it's still there, no? And, and uh, the uh, SUC is, and not only state universities and colleges, but higher educational institutes, non private universities. Uh, they still have that knowledge and they're all egging no, to assist uh, LGUs in their respective localities. That's it. Yeah. Maraming salamat, Dr. Yapi. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Okay, we are down to our last two questions. Um, we have a question here from um, Anjo Bakarisas. If the PDP indicators are outcome indicators and achieving the outcome indicators are not solely the responsibility of the LGUs, is there a mechanism uh, where where the LGUs and NGAs will converge to monitor progress. Is there, is, are there guidelines on monitoring PDP and SDG indicators at the local level? Uh, you said? Well, yeah. If lahat ng ano, uh, all the indicators in the, in the PDP are being monitored by the implementing agencies, no? And um, ang kailangan talaga natin for the local government uh, units or local governments, you know, is to monitor also their own indicators. No, so that's why we we need to align them. Yun ang yun ang sinasabi. Just like uh, they're monitoring their indicators to be able to uh, to vie for that seal of uh, good local governments, you know, they should be also doing that. If you know, if uh, there are indicators. You know that uh, with, with the aligned indicators for aligned targets, no. So, uh, yun lang yun, and it, it's supposed to be the also the it's supposed to be the responsibility to you know to be to be monitoring this. Uh, I don't know if kaya nga meron akong sinasuggest na once na na mas malaki na yung pondo nila to have a dedicated talagang statistics office or mm. statistician. Uh, who are, who is really trained to monitor, you know, uh, 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 the, 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 the needed or the relevant indicators that could really, you know, provide inputs to to, to those of the of the national government. So, wala kami guidelines, uh, so to speak, na one, two, three, four, five. But it's really it's really the implementing agencies that do do those for us, uh, and. Uh, and populate the, the the results matrix. So I don't know, uh, K, 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 K Director Bonagua, if they they would have some ano sa mga local governments on how you know these are monitored. Thank Director you, Bonagua. Um, well, well yun nga yung, as we mentioned earlier, uh, monitoring the results matrix. Medyo wala pa tayo dyan, no? We have just introduced the uh, the tool. Uh, but uh, I think that the monitoring system that we have right now is the seal of good local governance, which measures mostly uh, outputs from local governments. What are the things that they need to deliver? Uh, what are should be existing uh, in their localities? But then not at the level of the development outcomes. Let's say poverty level, health uh, mm, that's right. outcomes. Wala pa sa ganun. Uh, maybe uh, oh, oh, we will come to that. <laughs> pag-aaralan natin how we can actually uh, parang divide the line ano yung uh, ano yung uh, responsibilities of the national and the local government units then really measure accomplishment uh, across those two levels pero wala pa po sa ngayon okay Thank you, Director Banagwa and uh, Yusek Sumbilia. Okay, to cap our uh, discussion, may I request our speakers to give us um, some final words uh, starting Starting with uh, uh, Justine. Okay, yes, thank you, Sheila. Um, I'd like to thank everyone, especially the panelists here who, who helped me answer the questions and all of you who attended so actively. But this just goes to show the important role of local governments moving forward. 
um, we have a lot of work cut up, uh, cut out for us ahead of us, and and more so especially because the national government in the next couple of years will be um, focused really in managing still this COVID pandemic and recovering from it. So a lot also of um, the responsibility of economic recovery lies with local governments. I've always said this in my in my other presentations regarding um, moving forward with the Mandanas. Um, a large part of the infrastructure responsibility will also rely on uh, local governments. And this is very important and the quickest way actually to achieve um, economic growth. Now, I'm also happy to hear of the next steps in the DILG, especially and DBM, especially in trying to link the uh, plans, investment programmings, outputs and outcomes. This has been around for a long time, but it has, you know, taken traction already. So I'm looking forward to that. Also from the NEDA, it's nice to hear that there are continuous efforts really to the harmonization of the the indicators, but more importantly, which was not raised, but mentioned by you, Sumbira, I, I appreciate the efforts and the synchronization of the local planning and budgeting with the national planning and budgeting. I think that is a very, very important um, um, next step because um, for the for the annual budget, we have the fiscal year uh, January to, to December, but for the local budget, it is different. It starts somewhere in October. So, so the collaboration will be stronger once this is synchronized, I believe. And even at the local government levels with some of the KIIs, they said that we should synchronize with Mandanas, some of the administrators that we spoke to um, with the Mandanas ruling. So, so thank you so much again for your time. Um, and uh, let's, let's continue working together. Thank you. Thank you very much, Justine. And may we hear from uh, Engineer uh, Nilio, sir? Thank you, Ma'am Sheila, and, and the rest of the panelists, the rest of the resource persons. Well, I think uh, on the part of the local government unit, uh, uh, I think the challenge would be to sustain the, the effort of localization. No? So meaning because there are several, uh, you know, uh, indicators like a tool that we are using, we're using like SGLG, CBMS, and uh, of course, uh, the result matrices. No? So we hope that this would be put into really uh, institutionalization and uh, uh, so that uh, you know this this comes even after uh, the present dispensation no? meaning it, it transcends it would transcend uh, the political administration and um, uh, basically achieve what we are as we aspire as far as uh, uh, SDG and uh, and uh, our development plans uh, uh, ambition up till 2040 thank you Thank you very much. Um, I will postpone calling Director Bonaga because we will hear from her um, at the closing of, of our uh, webinar. But uh, of course, last but, the, but not the least, Yusek Sumbilia, ma'am. Yeah. Well, thank you, Sheila, and thank you everyone for uh, you know participating in this webinar. Thank you for to PIDS for you know organizing you know uh, forums like this because I think this is a way by which you know. Uh, a lot more people get to know what really is happening and you know for them, for them to get up, updated that you know uh we are really is supposed to be one whole in in responding to uh, problems i cannot stress more what has been said by um dr uh, justine and uh, sister nilios uh, as i said in my in my message a while ago uh you the puzzle is not complete unless you know all the pieces the pieces are the local government units are really put in place you know depending on you know uh their own uh competitive advantage then or their own resources and all these things but we really need you know to 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 get that harmonization that alignment because if this is not going to be done you know it's going to be difficult really to achieve what Ever uh, uh, visions or whatever ambition, not you know, whatever national goals we're going to have. I think it, the the importance of the local government to be contributing to this uh, uh, to these efforts are really you know cannot be really you know, stressed more than uh, what we have been saying. So, maraming salamat sa sa ating lahat. Thank you. At maraming salamat din po, uh, Yusek Sumbilia, and thank you also to um, um, Dr. Yap. Uh, Director uh, Dr. David Yap for uh, sharing his insights during the open forum. 
So friends, at this point, please join me in thanking Dr. Justin Sikat of PIDS, Undersecretary Mercy Sombilia of NEDA, and Engineer uh, Mario Nilios uh, of the League of Local Planning and Development Coordinators of the Philippines for the available insights that they uh, have shared with us this afternoon. Let us give them a big virtual clap. And thank you to all our participants who shared the insights as well as asked thought-provoking questions during the open forum. I am sure you have a lot of takeaways from today's discussion, so let me just focus on a few things. First, uh, we've heard um, the need to uh, ensure that uh, the current localization efforts are not just in compliance with the executive order, but really part of the planning process planning process of the, uh, of the LGUs, the sustainability of the localization process is important to ensure alignment of local plans with the national goals. I, also, another uh, takeaway worth pointing out is the importance of aligning local development plans, targets, and indicators. And uh, we have discussed uh, the, in, the, the need to increase the availability of baseline data to improve our local development plans. And also for more effective monitoring and evaluation, we also heard the value of making granular data more available. So we can measure not just outcomes, but not just outputs, but also outcomes. And lastly, uh, the results matrix should also be regularly assessed and refined to ensure that they are relevant and up to date for, for uh, um, planning, implementation, and monitoring purposes at the local level. Okay, so. On that note, I wish to announce the three winners of our poll for this week. Oh, let me check. Um, okay, the winners of our uh, uh, poll for this week are Karen Santiago, Remeli Lachica, and Ernesto Bautista. I repeat, Karen Santiago, Remeli Lachica, and Ernesto Bautista. Uh, you won in our poll. Uh, for this uh, week and our webinar team will get in touch with you for the delivery of your prize. So I now give the floor to our MC, Rowena Taliping for the remainder of our virtual event. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Ms. Sheila. So at this point, I'd like to introduce our closing speaker. She is the Director of the Bureau of Local Government Development, or BLGD, of uh, the Department of the Interior and Local Government. The Bureau leads in the development and formulation of policies and programs for the capacity development of local government units. She uh, supervises various uh, programs to enhance the capacities of local governments for greater autonomy, to pursue local economic development, and to encourage good performance through performance incentive programs such as the ease of doing business and improving competitiveness of LGUs, performance challenge fund, rationalizing local planning and mainstreaming disaster risk reduction and uh, climate change adaptation in local development planning, gender responsive local governance, sustainable development goal localization, and the establishment of the community-based monitoring system, among others. She leads the implementation of different projects, such as the local governance and budget reform program, poverty environment initiatives, and review of the local government code, which are supported by the United Nations Development Program in the Philippines, or UNDP, the Asian Development Bank, and the OSAID. Friends, I now give you Director Annalisa Bonagua, ma'am. The floor is now yours. Maraming salamat, Weng, uh, to uh, Dr. Urbeta, uh, Dr. Uh, Justin Sikat, our main resource speaker and, and her fellow uh, researchers. Uh, to our discussant, uh, Undersecretary Mercedita Sombilla, ma'am, of NEDA, and Engineer Mario Nilios of the League of Local Planners. Marami pong salamat for joining us today. And to the officials and uh, field officers of the DILG, NEDA, DBM, and other national government agencies, also local uh, government units, officials, and functionaries, members of the academy, the academy, and all others who are here today, uh, our heart heartfelt appreciation for taking time to be part of uh, today's activity. Alam namin lahat tayo ay DC. No? Uh, to start with, uh, the Philippine Development Plan, or PDP 2017-2022, anchored on ambition 1940, envisions uh, the life that everybody wants and the SDGs that uh, provided the 2030 targets for sustainable development, provided the long-term goals and vision for the entire country. And uh, as such, 
uh, the local governments as partner of national government develop national government in national development should be aligning their priorities with the for the attainment of these national goals as embedded in the PDP. And as mentioned, as 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 reported and discussed or also earlier, the provincial uh, results matrix or the dinamin element tawag no provincial and NCRLG results matrix was introduced by DILG in partnership with NEDA uh, in 2018, uh, uh, which is the next logical step following uh, our orientation and localization efforts of the PDP and the SDGs at the local level. So this was intended to facilitate and uh, approximate the alignment and contribution of LGUs in that achievement of the national development outcomes, strategic direction, and priority uh, trust embodied in the PDP. Uh, the important role of local government units in the realization of the ambition in 2040 and the 2030 agenda is acknowledged given the collective strength of uh, the 1,715 provincial, city, and municipal governments, not, not to mention the 42,000 barangays nationwide that even, even eventually, that individually tracks and create their own development plan. Uh, the localization initiatives um, were intended to influence LGU priorities, uh, but the mechanism introduced in the formulation of the provincial and NCR LGU results matrix also provided a venue for greater convergence and alignment of the development direction and priorities within the province. No, parang dalawa talaga yung intention. Uh, in their exercise, exercise of provincial oversight with respect to their component cities and municipalities and the HUCs and the ICCs, as well as the uh, provinces within the broader regional development context. Naman. So while the policies and uh, instruments for the institutionalization of the provincial and NCR LGUs results matrices are already in place, majority of our LGUs have to uh, have complied uh, since 2018, no? resounding 90% uh, of our LGUs are already complying, no? even in the initial uh, year of implementation. Uh, the need to assess the efficacy and effectiveness of uh, the tool to promote alignment and to provide mechanism uh, by which to, me to measure LGU contribution to higher tier or higher level of LGU uh, objectives and uh, development direction was deemed essential. That's therefore uh, we uh, requested PIDS to conduct this study. Gusto namin ma-validate whether what we are doing is really at the right direction. And uh, now we hear the positive response from local government units uh, uh, that it is, which is a manifestation somehow of the LGU's um, uh, parang realization and appreciation of the tool in a, for enabled them to, to see the priorities of national government as well as it, also track their own development direction in relation to the national development uh, priorities. So with the national and local election happening in FY2022, uh, we'll be having a new PDP you know, for the term of the next administration. And consequently, it may usher in changes in the strategic priorities as the new set of local officials assume naman, uh, the helm in some local governments. Uh, likewise, Guru, more importantly, FY 2022 uh, marks the or will be the start of the implementation of the Supreme Court ruling on the Mandanas and Garcia petition, which will provide local government units greater uh, resources to implement uh, greater responsibilities towards um, providing the needs of our constituents. So, and also, last but not the least, no, in confluence of influences natin, uh, next year will also signal the start of the institutionalization of the CBMS as a national tool. No? It's a mandated tool for all local government units to implement and subscribe to. So all these things happening together will eventually, hopefully, uh, provide us some answers to many of the questions, no? maraming questions on availability of data, and hopefully all this... Uh, developments will improve our tool on the results matrix. And also, therefore, with the greater availability of local data under the CBMS, the provincial results matrices uh, uh, will, show, will have greater potential as a tool for local uh, government units performance measurement and for ensuring alignment 
of national and subnational priorities. And with a new PDP and the transition to full devolution, it also provides a strategic uh, tool to track and monitor LG performance in the devolved functions. So indeed, um, uh, the high compliance of LGs and they're sounding yes, kanina parang yes, 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 si engineer Nilios. <laughs> uh, and the findings of the study attest to the relevance, tama ba ako, and the usefulness of this initiative, uh, the LG URMs. And therefore, uh, uh, with the recommendation put forward, uh, the DILG will continue to pursue the enhancement of uh, relevant policies and guidelines and instruments. Uh, to institutionalize the results matrices in the development, in local development planning and governance processes. No? Uh, marami na tayong policies that we are looking in, uh, looking into updating so that we can institutionalize this uh, process, this tool. Though we know that each region, each province, and maybe probably each city and municipality uh, would have their respective priority needs and development agenda, especially under the full devolution landscape. We hope that through the RM, the results matrices, uh, LGU's efforts will collectively contribute to the achievement of the national de development targets and outcome by an alignment of the results matrices from the provincial, uh, region, hanggang sa national level. Hindi pa po, wala pa po kami sa cities and municipalities, but darating po tayo doon. And we hope that today's activity have sparked and and renewed the interest and increase your appreciation of the department's uh, PDP localization initiatives. Uh, we hope also that uh, the continued support, we hope for the continued support of our partner agencies and local government units as we continue to embark in the improvement of the provincial or the LGU results matrices to in include or to increase its effectiveness in assessing LGU contribution to the national development objectives in line with the whole of nation, whole of government approach in our journey towards the realization of the ambition of every Filipino of a matatag, maginhawa, at panatag na buhay. So again, our sincerest appreciation to everyone who are with us today and to the PIDS team Thank you for always helping the ILG evaluate and improve our efforts to improve our support uh, tools and systems for our local government units. So, muli po, maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. Magandang hapon at stay safe po everyone. Thank, Thank you, you so much, uh, Director Bonagua. But before we finally finally end this webinar, we have some important announcements to make. You can access the presentations in today's webinar from the PIDS website. So flash on the screen is the link to our website. Also, please answer the feedback form that will pop up on your screen. Your comments are important to us to improve our webinars. We also, wa we also want to encourage everyone to regularly visit our website and social media pages, which are flashed on the screen. Likewise, we would like to thank all those who have tuned in on our uh, Facebook page and those who, who followed our, li our live tweets. Also flash on the screen is the list of PEDS forthcoming webinars. As you can see, our calendar for September is full because it's the, it's the Development Policy Research Month or the DPRM celebration. Okay, the DPRM is an annual event led by PIDS every September to promote awareness and understanding of the importance of policy research in formulating evidence-based policies, programs, and projects. So this year's DPRM theme is Reset and Rebuild for a Better Philippines in the Post-Pandemic World or in Filipino. Muling magsimula at magtayo tungo sa mas matatag na Pilipinas pagkatapos ng pandemia. So this September, we have several activities lined up to promote the DPRM and its theme. We will start with a kickoff uh, virtual forum on September 2 to be followed by the 7th Mindanao Policy Research for Forum on September 9. Then we will hold a four-part uh, webinar series for the annual Public Policy Conference or the APPC on September 14, 16, 21, and 23. The APPC, the, the APPC is the highlight and um, the culminating activity of the DPRM. So please mark these dates on your calendars and we hope to see you in these events. So finally, we would like to thank all representatives from the government, academe, private sector, civil society, media, and international organization who joined us today. Marami pong salamat sa inyong lahat. Stay safe and see you in our next activities.